What makes Smash so special? It started off as a bunch of diehards that got to know each other. And then it just grew and grew and grew into this huge community that we have now where it's just amazing. Welcome to the family. <laughs> I think what brought me into Smash was just the fact that everybody could play. Anybody can jump in and play at any time, whether you're a pro or an amateur. That's just one of the most inviting fighting games of all time. The first time I've ever played Smash Brothers was when I was five years old. I was about four years old at the time. Pretty much whenever I was able to hold a controller, I got hooked instantly. Like, every single night I'd be playing. We would 2v1 against our, our dad. All the time, and, uh, all the time. We still lost. <laughs> yeah, we couldn't. We, we grew up and now he, <laughs> he doesn't stand a chance anymore. I don't remember a time being alive where Smash Bros. wasn't in my life. I got Melee in a GameCube and life never been the same. It's easy to pick up, but it's hard to master, and I think it's brilliant. Like, I could write you a book about Smash, every game for like like 10,000 pages long. I felt every emotion in the book because of this game. And that's what makes it beautiful. I mean, it's just very satisfying to KO somebody in this game. <laughs> There's nothing even close to it. We like spiking. We like putting boots in the people's face and sending them straight down. Game. Let's go. Yes, let's go! I've got one! Let's go! Ah. Like, it was so good. <laughs> I can't believe that. Oh, this game, dude. It's remarkable how much love and passion everyone here has for the game and for the community. The Super Smash Brothers community is community like no other, where... Your friends I met through this game. And all my friends. Smash, my, my girlfriend met her through Smash. This is actually how I ended up meeting my girlfriend. We actually met at my first tournament, and after that, we became really, really close, and we've been together for three years ever since. Everybody is, is your best friend, whether you just met them or you've known them for years. Oh, so many friends. I mean, so many friends going to tournaments. So the fact that there are hundreds of thousands of people that are very passionate about it, it makes me feel like I belong. I feel home when I'm with the Smash community, for sure. Smash in one word? Uniting. Journey. Epic. Fun. Just amazing. Intense. Unreal. <laughs> I would just have to say amazing. Beautiful. Life. Passion. Memories. I'd say family. 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 The family atmosphere is uh, something that makes the Smash community really special, if you ask me. Theater. It's the moment that so many of you have been waiting for, the Super Smash Brothers Invitational 2018. An unbelievable crowd here as we get set. We've got a terrific tournament, eight of the finest players in the world, covering six countries as we get an early look at Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. And to get things started, there's only one man who can do it right. Please welcome... The creator of the Super Smash Brothers series, hey. Mr. Sakura. Hey. I don't know. Smash Brothers Invitation uh, 2018. I'm the director of the game, Masahiro Sakurai. Did you all catch the direct this morning? What did you think? え、今回の売りというのはやはり全員登場その言葉に尽きると思います。Thank you for watching and really uh, what we wanted to focus on this time is as we mentioned everyone is here. ところで今回の戦いは、え、E3バージョン、E3で展示するバージョンを使うためにキャラクターがおよそ 30体います。
However, the version we're using for the tournament today is the E3 version, so there's only about yeah. 30 characters available. It's still a lot. 30 characters, jeez. It's still but like it's so many. Be able to play with a lot more characters. ところで、後ろに並んでいる彼らは、え、スマブラの中でもトッププレイヤーですが、え、彼らは実は、え、スマブラSPあの、アルティメットですかね。え、それをほとんどやったことがありません。So the players you see behind us, they are some of the top Smash players. However, they've actually had very little experience with uh Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. ですが まあ、トッププレイヤーの彼らだったらきっとめちゃめちゃに使いこなしてなぜか使いこなして大変面白い試合を展開してくるに違いないと私は確信しております。But I am very confident that these level uh, players of this level will be able to handle it and be able to show us a great match. それでは世界初のスマブラアルティメット大会をお楽しみください。well then, please enjoy the very first Smash Brothers Ultimate Tournament. <clears throat> Let's give it up one more time for Mr. Sakurai as we kick off the Super Smash Brothers Invitational 2018. I'm your host and joining me we have two of the finest commentators when it comes to Super Smash Brothers. Please give a warm welcome to Vicky Kitty and Vish. And we have waited so long for this day, and I know how excited both of you are. Early impressions from what we've seen from Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Jordan, this game is so fast, I don't even know what I am playing right now. And I cannot wait for everyone to check out what we have for the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Oh no, his mic is messed up. Somebody forgot to turn his mic on. Lots of excitement here, and Vicky, let's get to the basics of Smash, because here's what's great. We've got a wonderful audience that's joining us. We have people that have been playing this game for years and years and years this series. They grew up with this game. However, there's another new generation of future Super Smash Brothers players that will have their introduction to Smash Brothers through Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. So give us some of the basics of what we're looking for today with gameplay. So currently, we have come from a history of different games. You have Melee and you have Super Smash Brothers for the Wii U. Uh, both of them are different in their own ways. Currently, for the Super Smash Brothers basics of what you're going to be seeing today, the goal is to knock the opposing fighters off the stage. You guys are already familiar with that. Each fighter starts at 0%. The damage increases as each fighter gets hit. As the percentage goes up, it does become easier for a fighter to be knocked off the stage. When a fighter is knocked off the stage, it is a KO, and the player then loses a stop. Very excellent description right there. And this tournament is going to feature a lot of different things. It's not just going to be 1v1 Fox only. We're going to see some smash balls. We're going to see items. We're going to see singles, doubles, and four-player free-for-alls as well, too. And you look at what you're possibly most excited for here, Vicky, and it's a chance to see some of the... Okay, so... So the... the action here. So this is like a Vish, legit... Tell us about some of the stuff we're going to see from this tournament. Well, for round right here. It's going to be a doubles match between Zero and Armada versus Abadongo and Plup. We have never seen these kind of matchups. We are seeing a Melee and Smash 4 come together. I am so excited for what's going to happen here. But yeah, our, our They're doing doubles. Zero, Armada versus Abadongo and Plup. And let's talk about the character selection here. We heard we're going to have around 30 characters here. So here's They're legit doing a real doubles tournament right players, there. And they did what's called a snake trap. They drew numbers and they were each assigned a number one through eight. Number one got the first pick for a fighter. Number eight got the eighth pick. So you have a pool of three fighters. One through eight picks, right. and then eight gets the first pick for the second fighter. Right. And then you go back down to one, and then one gets the first pick for the third fighter. Why do you have three fighters? You have to use a different fighter your first three matches. Oh. After that, you can go back and use the same okay. fighter for the rest of the match, as we said. So, for example, if I want to go with Mario, Donkey Kong, and Bowser, I have to use Mario, then Donkey Kong, then Bowser if I want to get back to Mario. So, Vicky, it forces these fighters to maybe get out of their comfort zone and use someone that they might not typically use. Right, they can't use the same character unless they transition through the other three characters they've originally picked. 
So that forces them to try out new characters, but also showcase. I think they should reveal a mode where you can. Uh, what kind of move set you be expecting you can, like, when you get the game? And we Each stock have these represents the character. With the players. They did the draft earlier on, so they are set to go. They've and then had a when that character the stock is up, you're but let's you get a chance switching to get to know it's like a tag mode. Players, just a that little would be bit so better. cool. Sometimes it's not so important to be a hero as much as it is a zero. With the capital R. They say if you look closely, there are gods among men. <laughs> but behind every god stands a goddess. Or in this case, a princess. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes it just comes down to having the right attitude. I am not kidding you right now. Dude, really? Dude, really? You're about to be late for the tournament. <laughs> One of those pants that Pluff has on. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> now, these guys will compete with the fate of the entire universe in their hands. Oh, wait. It's not the entire universe? It's just for the Super Smash Brothers. Oh, okay. That's cool, too. <laughs> Sweet. That's pretty well, funny. some very familiar faces as we get set for the Super Smash Brothers Invitational 2018. And let's take a closer look at how this first round matchup will work up amongst these four professionals. We bring out four of them, so that means it's going to be a doubles match to get things started here. Smash ball on, items off. And below each character, below each player, we should say, you see the three characters they drafted. So, Vicky, let's get your early thoughts on the decisions for Zero and Armada. So for those of you <clears throat> tuning in, you guys know who Zero is, the best Smash Brothers for Wii U player with a 56 tournament win streak throughout nearly all of 2015, second at EVO 2018, one Frostbite, one EVO, it's going to be fantastic. Vish, what are your thoughts on Armada? I mean, Armada is just like the melee side of that Titan that is Zero. I mean, he's won Genesis through two through four, he's won EVO 2015, 2017, he is a team's god so it's going to be amazing to see how he fares up especially with a dynamite combo like zero and i have to say this without a letting squeezing by plup choosing ridley as one of his oh. characters so we will see ridley in action today quite possibly and you see Abadongo getting the chance to choose his coveted Mewtwo as well. Yeah, Abadongo being known for his Mewtwo and as well as his Pac-Man, so it's going to be quite interesting to see. Let's get set for our first matchup what in about the Super Wario? Smash Brothers Invitational Wah. 2018. You see the two teams, Zero and Armada, taking on Abadongo and Plup as we get set to see the first ever competitive matchup and Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. They're getting their characters set to go as we take a look at the stage here. And this just the excitement we feel here in the Belasco Theater. Yeah, man, it's, it's just like you're saying, this is the first competitive set we get to see in Smash Brothers Ultimate. I am really excited for uh, what these players have in store. Uh, I'm curious because as, as we talked about earlier, you have to choose one of your three characters in your arsenal during this match. And it looks like Armada is gonna be going with Samus. Plup is going to be going with Ridley. 
And Abadon will go in with Core, and then you see Plup with <laughs> Ridley, cannon. as you said, Zero with Mario, Armada with Samus, and early on already, Samus taking the brunt of the damage here. Mario doing a great job staying alive, edge guarding on the side, but here comes Armada and Vicky. That smoke is going to help help us determine who launches who off the side of the map as well. Exactly. The color smoke that you are seeing displayed here indicates that the player that launched that character in general is the one that incited the move that sent them that far. Yes. 81% damage for Armada as Armada trying to avoid some more attacks. Meanwhile, zero with Ooh. Mario. Ridley gets sent sending to the side of the screen here, Fish, and Armada following up once again. Yeah, and uh, I really like the game plan that uh, Zero and Armada recover. are doing. Armada seems to be either covering the, the ledge or the center, and they keep going vice versa, and Armada cleaning out that edge guard on that stock earlier. Plump Plum. losing the first stock of this match, two on two. Armada and Zero doing a terrific job of They're their Everybody's teching the, the, the top, Warren though. Bouncing Armada in the middle of the stage. Armada able to come down. That yeah, everybody keeps teching the... By the barrier. Ridley sent off to the side, but oh, there goes Armada. And the red team losing their first stock here, Vicky, as we see Abadango holding strong with Corrin. And as you saw, the Smash Ball being caught on the top of the stage, unfortunately, is not going to be caught. Here it comes back, getting caught once again. Is anyone going to get it? Zero with the bear, catching it immediately, and unfortunately, missing the very first Smash Ball that you see Zero obtain. Zero with the foul ball. They didn't Abadango change Mario's, still alive uh... with all three stocks, but Plump is down to his final stock in Ridley. There goes Corrin, sent off to the right-hand side of your screen, trying to get back on. Plum doing a fine job as well, too, applying some pressure. Beautiful job there of clearing out some traffic. And Fish, we continue to see lots of pressure being put on by both Armada and Zero. Man, I gotta say, this stage with that, uh, the ceiling like that on top makes it such that if you're in the center of the stage, you don't get sent off vertically. So they're uh, kind of opting to fight there if they're at a higher percent. You see Abadonga's kind of staying there because he's like, you know what, I can maybe tech off the top of that. Maybe I can DI to get, make sure that I'm on the top there. And uh, unfortunately, he loses his stock. Abadango losing his first stock. Blue team 2-1. Meanwhile, it's 2-2 for the red team of Armada and Zero. And now, Abadango gets sent out again, and it's 1-1 for the blue team. And Armada and Zero, they smell blood in the water here, Fish. And then, and Fluff, you saw it using the share stock because Abadango is doing such a good job being a stock tank in the center of the stage. Oh, man, Ridley. Kind of a difficult character to use, it seems. Zero trying to recover, but Plop with a beautiful up air sends Zero off to the side of the screen. Zero's able to recover. Armada... I think it was up special. Those ...projectiles from Samus. Plop able to clear out Zero once again. Armada at the top of the level. Abadango using that up air on Armada. Zero with a couple of up tilts against... Abadongo and Plump to rack up the damage, and Zero Vicky doing a great job of staying alive with Mario up until then, of course. <laughs> Commentators curse, Jordan, but Armada was doing such a good job at catching Zero and making sure Zero was safe and sound in the middle. As you can see, they are fighting in the middle. Uh, no tech zone here for what it seems. Abba trying to cover his teammate as he makes it back onto the stage. Armada doing a good job, as you can see, maintaining stage control with zero though it's actually a pretty even match as we're saying that zero is the only one with like a huge lead but it oh my god a club with a huge back air and that'll be it for abadago's last stock and that's it the game is over that is takes it that is game armada and zero doing an excellent job of clearing things out and you mentioned the fact the fine edge guarding we saw from both of those and we got our first look at ridley and you said a little bit of a difficult character to probably yeah. understand because you just found out about the character this morning <laughs> yeah. but armada Mata and Zero, they move on and advance to the winner's bracket. And Vicky, mm -hmm. it was a good point. You pointed out with this level, in this great plateau, you've got the tower in the middle of the ceiling. It makes it very difficult for anybody to send anybody through the top of the stage. And we saw a lot of traffic underneath there. Yeah, unfortunately, it didn't look like it was a very easy job to tech in the middle of that. There was a lot of knockback happening in the middle of the stage. Um, but there was an instance where Amada was able to tech on the side of the great plateau. So uh, fighting in the middle was probably the best bet for the red team to take advantage of stage control and continuously pressure the blue team and Vish we talk about this game a lot of the players always focus on movement and why it's so important in the Super Smash Brothers series what are some of the things you've noticed about the movement in Super Smash Brothers Ultimate I mean honestly like we we're saying before it's faster um, one of the uh, options that you can do is you can do a short hop aerial just a bit faster you could push the jump and a at the same time so that you don't have to like tap jump to make it uh, short hop and I feel like this in combination with just the faster pace of the way the game goes you saw like the way the knockback works is even though you get hit you fly immediately to where your trajectory is a lot faster than we've seen in previous Smash games so everything is happening is just like a, a faster pace 
And so I think with teams, it actually makes it a little bit harder to, make, you know, combo off your, your allies' hits and whatnot. So I think that's a huge factor in this game. Let's take a look at the updated bracket after our first match was just concluded. You had Zero and Armada getting the victory, which means the two buddies get a face-off against each other in the next oh, winner's hey, round. Pug. Coming up next, though, we'll have our next set of doubles. And for those players, let's take a moment. So they're doing a doubles. Just a little bit better. Tournament. They have regular items off, but they have Smash Balls on. They call him Mr. R because Mr. PG-13 is, <coughs> well, kind of... Oh, no, Mr. R. Oh, he's the one that... He put his milk in the bowl first, and then he pours Legend his cereal on top of his milk. Born into greatness. And others are just lucky. In a world where an adult man can be named Mang Zero. It's Mango. Mango? Really? Yeah. Like my grandma's favorite food? Uh, I'm, I'm over this. May not be old enough to sign a lease, rent a car, or obtain a legal permit to feed a pig in Arizona, but he can kick your butt and smash. Now, these guys will compete with the fate of the entire universe. Wait, it's not the entire universe? It's Super Smash Brothers? That's cool too. Dude, the first I one. Want to get in on that action? I have an arm too. Super Smash Brothers Invitational 2018. I think I I think I thought the first one was funny. And once again, some big time names as we introduce the other half of our competitors here. And Vicky, what can you say about some of the accolades of these players here? Well. Mr. R is one of the players that a lot of people know from Smash Brothers for Wii U, fifth at Frostbite 2018. Um, he did do second at EVO 2017, so that definitely put him on the map. He also helped mold the Sheik meta. So Mr. R, no, being a known player, um, making his ways around the community, but also MK Leo, a prodigy to his respective game, very young player, 17 years old, coming all the way from Mexico. And we take a look at the player cards and see what characters our players selected for this opening round. And obviously, <clears> there are three that they drafted here. Mr. R, you see the selection right below. Lucky, uh, Lucky and got. And Mango. Lucky got Fox. The inkling decision for Mango here, Vish. One of the new characters of Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Honestly, I'm really excited that Mango got inkling because you know his playstyle oh is reckless. Oh God, Leo it's got flashy. Bayonetta. He's not afraid to risk uh -oh. it. All. He's like, you know what? This is a new type of character. I'm just gonna play it. Right away, right off the bat, why not? And Vish, as they get set, take us through some strategy with doubles because obviously there's a lot going on in the map, and you want to make sure that you have some focused, concentrated attacks. Uh, not that really was the last one. Really, just focus in on. They already part. had a set yeah, of true, doubles. True, true. And the uh, the percentages. And Plup had Plup had Ridley, doubles, but they lost. The, the normal hits don't do as much percentage as they would in singles versus doubles. But a lot of it is just kind of like taking up space with your player. Oh my God. And Mango going Ganondorf right off the bat. I like it. Yeah, so they kind of want to just go around both the other players, kind of pinch them in certain situations. One person grabs the edge, one person stays Did the you see how low the, that, the that up air was? Really well. Let's pick this up in Moray Towers. Red team, Mr. R going oh, as cloud. You see the limit meter right there. A couple God. of up tilts by Lucky. And you stop. see Mango using Ganondorf and Vicky. Ganondorf brings a new weapon to his arsenal in Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Ganondorf now has a sword for his smash attacks. As you saw earlier, Lucky losing his shield quite early within the game. And I'm so happy we get to see a display of Ganondorf not just using his fists and his feet, Jordan, <laughs> but also the sword. And Vish, you look at this map, all the different Levels. I think it's it was really like whenever the other one ended. When there's so much verticality and more towers is it ended pretty to the fast. Top of the screen and now Mr. R taking a trip to the left. Yeah, I think uh, moves that have huge hitboxes do really well. As we saw the the 
the smash attack from Bayonetta going through the platforms like that. I think huge hitboxes like uh, Ganon's as well will do really well on this stage. So great choices from everyone. Cloud also a huge uh, sword hitbox will kind of just traverse and cover the uh, the stage really well. Mango in the middle of your map right now, paired with MK Leo's Bayonetta. Three three stops so, for the blue team. However, Lucky losing it's the first stop how is three two red and Mr. R at 135 with Cloud at the top of your screen trying to avoid getting player. knocked out. And you see another fighter to your left, Mango, able to recover with Ganon on the left-hand side, but Lucky sets him down off the stage here, Vicky. And now it is an equal game between red and blue. You had a very similar fight to what people noticed from MKLeo and Mr. R, and unfortunately Mr. R star KOing in the background and losing his stock, left with two stocks in total now. MKLeo with Bayonetta doing a great job of hanging on, still on the stage. 3-2 advantage for the blue team over the 2-2 two -two for the red. Are you Mango with Ganon, missing with a couple of forward tilts right there. But you see Mr. R, nice work with the up air, able to connect. MK Leo able to punish Lucky right there as well too, Fish. Are you guys noticing that it feels like Mango's going right for Lucky every single time they're together? I see some heated battles coming up right now. Mango's like kind of just abandoning his teammate. He's like, you know what, Lucky, I'm coming down for you down there, man. See me. Lucky unable to recover at the bottom of your screen. He's down to his final stock. MK Leo, though, Vicky, still with his three stocks. He will refuse to KO, but here comes the smash. Well, Lucky's going to go ahead and grab that. Oh, we critical know hit, critical hit. You want to make sure your opponents oh. are lined up. He was facing oh, the wrong way, and he killed himself. Self-inflicted. KO, Vicky, and you gotta be careful. You can't get too excited. Unfortunately, he was facing the wrong direction and caused himself to lose that stock, Jordan. Oh, oh but we see Lucky getting the KO on MK Leo, and it's 2 2 blue team. However, 1 1 for Mr. R and Lucky. You're looking for MK Lango and Mango to close things out. Mango doing a great job, but oh, look at the top of your screen, Vish. What did we just see there? Oh, man, a vertical KO. I mean, now it's just a two on one situation. Uh, what, what, what can they, what, what can the way really that the do, team's man? paired out, like, this, this it would be really Mango funny if, 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 if it was MK Leo versus uh, MK Leo and, uh, and Mango versus Armada oh, and uh, Zero. Because those are kind of, like, at least the time that Zero was playing, the time that, like, there's a huge, like, big rivalry between Armada and Mango. Refuses to kind quit. of the same that thing between MK Leo and Zero. Using this system, you talk about being able to stay alive and just relentless and relentless from what we saw there. MK Leo, especially with that Bayonetta Vicky, staying alive to give the blue team the early advantage. We DI those and we live in, but not living enough. Unfortunately, they are going to fall, and MK Leo's team is going to proceed through bracket with Mango. Let's take a look at the updated bracket after our first two matches, and we'll see how these fighters will continue to make their way. So MK Leo and Mango, they get the victory, which means they will face off in a 1v1 coming up next, and it will also be Zero versus Armada. Oh, they fight each other. As well okay. Too. But let's get to our elimination bracket. So it was just doubles bracket, for the first round. Because obviously it's double elimination in this tournament. you got to send some folks home if you don't keep winning. It'll be doubles at this point, which will then send us to a four-player free-for-all in the next round. So you're going to have Abadongo and Plup versus Mr. R and Lucky in some doubles. And once again, when we look at those doubles, it seems like Vish, the fighter that's able to really make the most of Four having those three, three full all. stocks. We saw that with MK Leo, with Bayonetta. You're able just to apply consistent pressure, and we've seen that in both fights as well, too, having the lead with the 3-0 stock. Yeah, no, well, I mean, not actually, that because huge two -on -one potential you have multiple and, uh, characters. Now so going into this match, they can't characters. use that first character they had in that arsenal, so now they got to switch between the remaining switch. two that they have. And mm -hmm. I'm really curious to see how Lucky with his fast pace kind of play style is gonna change versus Plup and Abadongo and how Mr. R is gonna go through this, man. It's, it's gonna be crazy. Let's take a look at the updated player cards and see what characters are still available way for choice. As we said, players drafted three characters. And once showing you off use a character, characters you can possible. no longer use them. You see that character that's ineligible, they are grayed out. So for Abadongo, you've got your Mewtwo and Pac-Man still. Plup, Pit, and Villager, Mr. R, Ryu, and Little Mac. And then for Lucky, you have Bowser and Fox. So you look at some of the available oh. characters here. Not too many big, heavy characters out there here, Vicky. Not at all, but you still have to watch out for them because, <clears> as you notice, things are a little bit different. Abadongo plays both those characters. Versus free-for-alls or teams. Well, the damage does not so scale the now, same. He, back as in, in four-player free-for-all, uh, the damage Batman. scales less than when you're in 1v1s. He's really with Wario. And Vish, you look at the fact Wario. that you have items Wario on now for this yeah. doubles yeah. elimination matchup, and you also have the Smash Ball on, and so when it comes to items, 
How do you go about and change your strategy with that? Because that's not what we typically see in competitive play. Right, right. I think uh, it was clever, if this was what Lucky was thinking, to keep Fox because he has the reflector, which does so much more when you have items. I mean, it reflects back um, items at twice the force. And if you have Pokemon, it reflects back. Oh, but he says no, Vish. I'm going to go Bowser. <laughs> We've got Mr. R as Ryu, Lucky as Bowser, Abadongo as Pac-Man, and Plump as Villager. Both players, they have four stocks each. Items are on, so keep an eye out for that as you see the chocolate bar fly through the sky. And already, Lucky choosing Bowser. You see how big of a target he is, Vicky, taking on lots of damage at 65. He may be taking on a lot of damage, but he also deals a lot of damage on his own, so you're going to want to watch out as the trajectory of the game sends you pretty far. We see the Star Man Assist Trophy come out, and what's different is if you can KO the Assist Trophy, that's going to eliminate a stock, so keep an eye out for that in this version of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. We already see our first fighter sent flying off the screen. Lucky. Abadongo on the right-hand side trying to recover. Ew! And Ryu goes out already. Oh my god, we got Knuckles. Knuckles is this trophy. Knuckles oh, is this trophy. Knuckles is so trophy. Many, but here he comes trying to assist the blue team. X-Bomb deployed off the side of the stage as well, too. You see some bottles of milk flying in there trying to get some help. Plup doing a great <laughs> job with that forward tilt, clearing out the room of Lucky. Both fighters getting juggled in the air, both Lucky and Mr. R. And Smash Ball on the stage. This can certainly turn the tide. Abadongo and Plup still with four stocks each. And Mr. R losing his second stock there, Fish. Oh, yeah. And no one has seemed to got the Smash Ball. I mean, they all really went for it. I mean, that really changes his pace of any kind of match. That Oh, my. And Plup going so far for it. Doesn't quite get it. And Lucky with the Giga Bowser. What is he going to do? What is he going to target? This punch is brutal. Oh. And Abadongo going down. Waka 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 Patman sent off the stage right there. Lucky using Giga Bowser and the punch, but now Bowser and Lucky down to two stocks. Yeah. You've got a huge advantage for the blue team as Abadongo still hasn't taken a damage on his third stock here, Vicky. Yeah, unfortunately, that's a walk of goodbye to Pac-Man, but it doesn't matter because they're still in the lead. Abba holding on to the bomb and Mr. R out of the stadium. Ryu down to his final stock. Mr. R really going to have to hang in there tight. You've seen the pressure applied from both Abba Dongo and Plup, two speedy characters working their way around the stage right now. Pac-Man using the down air on Lucky. Lucky getting sent sailing. We now have our launch star, one of the new items. You get sent to that, and that Jeez. does it. That sends Bowser, top of the screen, KO. Both Mr. R and Lucky down to their final stock. No stock sharing at this point here. Abadongo Plup looking very healthy at this point here, Vish. Yeah, I mean, honestly, yeah, that, that uh, star launcher is really strong. I mean, it killed, it, K it KO'd Lucky at such a high percent off the top like that. I really like it. But I think now it seems like Lucky and Mr. R are kind of slowing down the pace. They were going really, really fast at the start of it, and they got combo oh. quite a bit, and now they're kind of controlling center as best they can. But the stock lead is just so substantial for Abadongo and Plup. Oh, Bowser with the got fair. That That's going to clear things out. Abadongo at three. Plup at two. Mr. R, he is eliminated, and you've got Lucky at 82%. It's two on one and plenty of stocks for both Abadongo and Plup. Abadongo at 103. Bowser at 113. He's hanging on still. Both fighters, though, have him in his sights. Lucky trying to hang in there. Plup doing a great so, job with those jumps. Because it's four player, yeah, they're actually. Seems like and there's. And well, obviously, there's less damage, but there's. By them and it said, opted for them to get the blast, but oh my <laughs> goodness, we're having the three part ship here oh, from God. Kirby Air Ride. I'm so glad we were able to see that once again come back to the Smash games, Jordan. A decisive victory. Nicely done as you look at Plup and Abadongo. And it seemed like, Bish. Their characters were just much quicker than what we saw for the other selections, Ryu and Bowser, and your opportunity to grab those items really gives you control of the stage. Yeah, I think um, because Bowser is like one of the slower of the cast in this particular set, I think that, you know, he just couldn't get up there as quickly, and he's so big, so he just got kind of tossed around by the other two uh, the, the, the enemies. So he wasn't able to get the Smash Balls very well. He got one, but he wasn't able to get the items, and, oh, man, just kind of a slower pace. Ryu also not the fastest in that kind of team's dynamic, but Abba and Plup pull it out, man. Let's go ahead and take a look at the updated standings here now that we look at the bracket and see how things are advancing for our players. The elimination bracket, Abba, Dongo, and Plup, they get the victory.
That means they'll move on. Mr. R and Lucky, we appreciate you guys joining us, but it is an elimination tournament, unfortunately. So a couple people have to go home. But we're going to take a quick pause from the high-level play we see from the professionals and switch gears to a couple of special guests. And for more on that, let's please welcome to the stage one of the great Super Smash Brothers hosts and commentators, TK Breezy. I was wondering where he was going to be. <laughs> we hadn't seen him yet, and I was like, OK. I like to see right here, Smash Brothers. I like it, I like it. I see a lot of people that I know, and that's great to see, but how are you guys enjoying this Invitational right now? That's good to know. That's good to know, thank you, thank you. That's good to know, but we go ahead and tell you guys what's gonna go down real quick, okay? We had our For Glory action going on, you know. We're gonna hit some for fun real quick. We have a six minute free for all with items and Smash Balls on with some of the greatest cosplayers I might have seen today. Jordan, let me ask you though, how are you enjoying the Invitational right now? I'm loving it. I think the biggest thing is the crowd and the support that we see here. You talk about the Super Smash Brothers community and we're seeing it in full force here, TK. Most definitely, thank you guys. Dude, this, this is the type of energy that I like. I almost walked in uh, this morning and thought I was actually at a tournament. Like there's so many people that I knew. I was like, man, are we, am I in bracket? I might be in bracket, all right. So let's get into it. We got our cosplayers. Can we get our cosplayers to the stage? And these cosplayers are Jesus as Mario, Trisha as Link, Tyson as Ness, and Matt as Pac-Man. And I love these outfits here, TK. And how about <laughs> Pac-Man right there? I love it. Jeez. I love it. Now they will get a chance to play Pac -Man. Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. For the first time ever, what advice would you give some folks that are picking this game up for the first time? All right, so you know how we, when we Smash 4 started and everyone was just rolling all over the place and it was impossible to beat? Well, that's not a thing here because in this game, there's actually diminishing return on the rolls. So the more that you roll, the longer the roll is, thus meaning you're going to get punished. So I'd say ease up off those triggers for a little bit because you don't want to be that guy who gets punished for rolling entirely too much. And what's different is we see some different mechanics with the air dodging as well, too, and just the general speed of the game. Oh, yeah, most definitely. The air dodging now, there's directional air dodging, if you haven't seen. But also, for the Brawl players and the Smash 4 players, there still is that Brawl-esque in Smash 4 uh, air dodge. If you do not hold a direction when you air dodge, there's a little uh, less lag. Still laggy enough for you to get punished, but there is a little less lag, so it's a little safer. And a couple of changes to some classic characters. What did you see from the newest edition of Link that we have in this one? Okay, this is actually going to be a... Uh, this is... I'm glad that we're seeing some Link action. Also, one, shout out to you guys all playing the character that you're cosplaying right now. I mean, that's just, we didn't that's plan just that. character loyalty. We didn't plan that. That's that just character that. loyalty I right love there. The devotion right there. So they're getting set for the matchup here. Obviously, they get a chance to get their hands on the game for the first time. And yeah. I really want to know from you that short hop mechanic for the forward attacks that we see in the air as well, too. Seems like it's going to really help out some players that aren't quite at that competitive level. Yeah, I mean, short hops have been in the game, uh, you know, for a long time. It's just not something that we ever really, like, discussed. It's not like an official term. It's just, hey, man, this is, a, this is a jump. This is a short hop. But now they kind of made it an official term. We have uh, short hops in the game, making it much easier to you know, attack, keep that pressure going on on someone when they're on the ground or maybe on a small platform or a low platform. Keep it going. Keep it going. And what's interesting, too, is we were talking about this a little bit before. The damage output is different when it's a 1v1 versus a four-player free-for-all match. Tell us a little bit more about that. All right, so the damage output, I, I'm just coming here rattling off information. I mean, I've been going at this game for, for you know, a little bit upstairs. We was out there chilling, so I got, uh, you know, I got some inside scoop. But the damage output, you obviously do, I, I don't know which one uh, people want to call the, the normalized damage, but you have a certain amount of damage that you do in one-on-ones, and then you have uh, a certain amount of damage that you do in free frauds or, you know, 2v2s. So the damage is definitely different. You're going to do more damage in one-on-ones, obviously, to compensate for the fact that it's just you. And then in doubles, because you have a team partner, you're gonna do a little less damage. It's not anything crazy. It's not like a 50% cut or anything, but you know, maybe up smash does 18 in singles, and then up smash does like 15 or so in doubles. And I'm curious as well too, it's gonna be Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, every character we've ever seen before, but a couple of new ones, Inkling and Ridley, many people waiting a long time to see Ridley in this game. Your thoughts on both those characters? I mean, I was, I was just as surprised as everyone else. I mean, you guys, when Ridley came out, how, how surprised were you guys, come on. Big surprise. All right, guys, but 
Outside of that, we're gonna get into the match. We have the fighters ready. They are all still playing the characters they are cosplayed, which again, I have to appreciate. Let's see how it goes down. We got the ready to fight on the on deck, and I'm just ready to see what's gonna happen. And in this four player free for all, if you wanna follow the action, you can see the color of the smoke when they get knocked off the stage. That'll tell you who launched who. You've got a nice convenient little radar, but let's get things rolling here. It's no secret, you got Mario, you got Link, you got Pac-Man, and this four-player free-for-all here, TK. The Pac-Man, Pac like, he's got the gloves on, so I don't even know how he's fully gripping this controller right now. So I want to see some, some, just some platinum Pac-Man play coming in from this, man. He looks so focused. Let me just let me get a good look at his face. He's focused, man. He's actually he's in it. He's dialed in, dude. He's dialed in. You've got the champion's tunic link. A couple differences there. And no hook shot for that link this time. No, no quick shot this time. If, uh, for those who do not know, Link actually is the Breath of the Wild link, so he does not have a hook shot one. He uh, also has detonatable bombs, much like the game. You can put a bomb out, leave it out so for he, a long time. He grabs and then, uh, as an opponent gets closer, you throw it towards your opponent and it hits him. You detonate it and get big damage. Smash ball on, items on. You see Ness with that smart bomb deploys that. That's going to be Mario sent sailing, but Mario hanging on right there. Bottom right hand corner of your screen. Up tilt from Pac Man. That clears out Link at this point. You got a super scope on the stage as well, too, if you want to use that. And TK early on, our fighter's doing a great job of hanging in there. But Link getting an early KO. Yeah, early Ness. KO for Link. I was wondering who's going to get that first one because it was actually looking jam packed in here. And as we're looking at the big screen and also some player faces, we're still looking at your focus oh my who is that coming off the left side we got we got the Whoa. final smash coming in from Ness he's taking almost everybody out on that one Ness grabs the smash ball you also saw Lolan full picks on the bottom of your screen as well too early on and what we're gonna see here TK is that the leader is gonna light up here just a little bit so you can follow and see who has the lead Pac-Man doing a great job clearing out and getting a KO against Ness right there so negating probably what Ness did with that smash ball and as, as Jordan said there is an indicator for who is in the lead he will flash uh, momentarily so it's kind of like the get that guy <laughs> you know the get that guy uh, notice right there if you want to get in the lead you know exactly who to take out that black hole right behind the launch star. You got an essential galaxy in the middle of this map as everything since spiraling in there. All four players on the map at this point. Oh, but here comes the crane Yo, from the crane. RK Bunny. RK Bunny. What you know about RK Bunny, TK? I, listen, I'm running up in the best crane player, but whoever is operating that crane is a god. Beehive falling onto the stage as well, too. And then Link with those remote bombs that we know it's much like different than from what we've seen in iterations in the past. Yeah, I mean, you cannot, you see him already has it set out. Now all he has to do is hit down B one more time to go ahead and explode it. Obviously, going to wait his time, uh, wait around a little bit to see if anyone's going to get next to it. Actually, he's not even on the stage anymore. Might have just rolled off. But now that it's off stage, he is able to pull another one. You only have one bomb at a time as Link. Oh, here we go. Ness at the top of the screen, just barely living that. It gets a dash attack. Not going to get too much off of that. Looking for the PK Thunder. Little ambitious there. Pac-Man in the middle of your screen right now. You see the star rod right behind him. Nobody grabbing that. That remote bomb sending Ness to the top of the screen. Ness and Mario on the right-hand side going a little 1v1. That fair knock of Mario back at this point. Oh, but you see the upward smash and another smash ball. Yeah, Magic. Oh, you should get that. Oh, two you smash that. balls, you say? You should get that one. Hit that okay, one. Okay, Mario. Here comes Mario. Oh, no. And the fair smash ball. Sailing. It wasn't a real one. It was fake. You guys, so a, w a good way to notice, now that it's been out there, a good way to notice the Smash Ball is real or fake is if the horizontal line is thick, that is a fake Smash Ball. Now, uh, none of our competitors might have seen it, end up getting blasted by it, it just goes off any one of the vicinity is taking big damage. That's just mean to put two of those out there. Smart Mom being deployed by Pac-Man once again. That's it, Mario to the top of your screen. Ness trying to use a PK Thunder on the left-hand side. Link with the beautiful up air. Here comes that Hokitate bomb that's gonna come crashing down here in just a second. Some bananas on your bottom right. Gotta get that potassium, Mario. Watch out for that bomb coming back down to Earth. Doesn't do any damage at that point. 215 left in this one, TK. Tightly contested. Look, very smart for that Mario to go for those bananas too, man. Has the highest percentage on deck right now. As you can see, the Rage Mechanic is obviously still in. Look at his uh, portrait right now. He's smoking, meaning he's extra mad. He is it's fuming, and the next person to take the up smash for him might be the last up smash they'll ever see. Mario, 138 at this point, trying to use the down air as he comes back down to earth. Mario with the up B that's going to clear out.
out some traffic. Link trying to use that Aura Club potentially, but Ness gets sent sailing to the left-hand side of your screen. Mario gets Kato. We got a minute 43 left, and it looks like Link is going to be the one in the advantage right now. Here comes Eevee. Eevee with the headbutt on Ness. Sends him sailing <laughs> through the sky. Yeah, it's just a quick tackle coming in from Eevee. We had again, this Ness is definitely going to be losing that HP if he keeps trying to battle this one. And here we go. Got another Smash Ball. Immediately drops it. Mario can't connect. Oh, he gets one. Oh, he gets one of them. He sends Link sailing on the ocean. That was close, man. He almost got the, the double KO, the double annihilation. That would have been crazy for him. So down to the wire, though. Pac-Man, the only one really in, uh, in KO percentages. But he's trying to still put up a good fight. Ness with the back air against Pac-Man. Nicely done right there. Link trying to shield block against that PK fire. Able to punish that. Pac-Man trying to throw some more projectiles on the left-hand side of your screen. Ness getting sent to the left-hand side as well, too. Super scope available at this point. And TK, we got a minute left in this one. We got a minute left. And I'm honestly, I have not been keeping up the score as well as one would have. I wish I was. Oh, it's beware! Or beware in the middle of the screen. The assist trophy Pokemon. Excuse me, the Pokemon gets the KO. Yeah, you got to watch out. And honestly, it might still be walking around the stage. Yeah, it's coming Apparently, right back. You got to watch yourself. Okay, it was actually Mario. People close will to try no, and not going, not sign in to oh, Fortnite wow. Switch. With your Epic Games Link account because you went to, to a PS4. It won't allow you to sign in using it. So if you used your Fortnite account on PS4, you can't actually sign in using it on your Switch. But it's only if you link to PS4, and all the other ones work. So is that something that Sony did? Who's our winner going to be here, TK? Because if that's something that Sony did, that's like the... That's pretty bad. Pac-Man does it. Look, even with the gloves on, I wasn't sure if he was going to be able to do it, but the gloves did not stop this man from taking that major win here at the Super Smash Brothers Invitational 2018. Give it up to my man, Pac-Man. Hmm. All right, guys, so that was a lot of fun, but we're going to get right back into the Super Smash Brothers Invitational 2018, throwing it to our casters. TK Breezy, give it up for TK Breezy one more time here. Nicely done. It's always great here, Vish, to see some players get their hands on Super Smash Brothers Ultimate for the first time, and you see all the fun that they had right there. I love seeing Smash Bros of any skill level, especially this early in the game. It's so hype. I mean, Pac-Man, a Pac-Man cosplayer winning as Pac-Man, what more can you ask for, it doesn't for get, Smash Ultimate? It doesn't get any better than that. And Vicky, we talked about fun, and that's the one thing we talk to all these professional players about. They say the one thing they try to remind themselves before they go out for any type of competition is that it's still a game and it's meant to be fun. Exactly. Not only does it bring friends together sometimes, <laughs> but it also allows great family time and it grants everyone to kind of loosen up and enjoy the game for what it is. Let's go ahead and take a look at the most recent bracket as we get set to advance in our professional side of the tournament here. We're going to have a one-on-one, -on -one, zero versus Armada. They were on the winning doubles team that overcame Abadango and Plup earlier in our first round of action. Let's take a look at the player cards here and see who they might be selecting. You see Zero has Sheik and Ike still available. Armada, Pokemon oh, Trainer, and right. Kirby. And Pokemon Trainer, if you change well, that, will certainly benefit that style of play in this uh, edition here, Vicky. It's going to be quite interesting because this time around, Pokemon really Trainer has no fatigue. For you, but you can already kind of see, some, ability, see no some of the characters in. Interesting things you can do in the air here as far as combos and uh, dodging, Vish, when you're it using Pokemon It should be Pokemon up on trainer. the YouTube. I think it's actually really cool because Squirtle, you know, he has, like, uh, um, lighter hits, so he can do light hits and then maybe switch in the jump animation you can switch uh, Pokemon in this version. So I, you can I switch will say roster-wise, you're going to be way. really happy. I think the really interesting thing is you have three sets of recoveries with uh, Pokemon yeah. Trainer because of you can doing it. You can do it while in the air. So I think that'll make you can you can use a uh, Ivysaur's Tether recovery. You can use Charizard's multiple jumps. You can use Squirtle, and he goes Pokemon Trainer. I choose you, uh, Ike versus Pokemon Trainer. Smash Ball on. So Vicky, with that Smash Ball being on, how does that change the strategy in a one v one? Well, as you notice, the Smash Ball doesn't usually appear in the beginning of the match, and more so in the middle of the match. So I know that Zero is going to be keeping his eye out for that, and Armada is going to want to try to take it over Zero before he tries to stifle. We talk about Armada 
has a very strong punish game, so he will look for holes in Zero, but Zero getting the nice grab into the side throw. Armada down below Zero at this point here, and Fish, it's one of these levels. We talked about Moray Towers, hard to establish that neutral game consistently. For sure, for sure, but I think Ivysaur is a great choice in this kind of stage because the vines kind of go through uh, the platforms as well, and even the up air, the bulb kind of hits up the platform. But the really cool part the about The final Ivysaur smash was like all of the Pokemon the coming out and them all doing their moves at the same time. Like so I don't know really if they've shown if it's changed Spiders or not. Finally on neutral ground, the it's probably the same. Right there after blocking the attack from zero, zero with the up air. That sends it's probably to the side. And how about the, uh, the fair that we just saw from zero there, Vicky? Yeah, he's doing a really good job at keeping Armada all the, off stage the and frenzy. unfortunately unable to make it back. You saw Armada uh, rolling a lot, and we've established already defensive play in this game is not rewarded, Jordan. It's more so aggressive play. Well put, aggressive play, and we see Armada go with the much faster Squirtle this time against Zero. Squirtle with the nice dash attack into the up air. That's going to send Zero sailing. Zero able to recover, though, nicely. And you look at Ike and those multitude of recovery options. That's going to really help out Zero as a heavier character, Vish. For sure, for sure. I, I really like the way that uh, these players are playing. They're using the whole stage. Uh, I, I kind of thought they would be e either in the center or whatnot, but they are just going all across the board. There's so many ledges that they have to edge guard. So that makes it quite harder, and I feel like that gives kind of a bit of an advantage to uh, Ike in the way he recovers because the way the side B goes through the stage and then the up B goes so high up, but a little bit of positional advantage for him. Squirtle with the nice back air against Zero, unable to get onto neutral ground and make a punish there. Armada versus Zero. Armada down to two stocks. Zero still making the most of his third stock, but Armada, oh, and we see the weight of Zero and Ike really benefiting them right there, Vicky. Yeah, these ceilings are absolutely humongous, but there's a smash ball, and Armada knocking Zero out of the map and trying his best to try to get the smash ball, but Zero is not having it. Although he lost his stock, he still manages to get the smash ball and manages to land the Aether. Unbelievable Great turn of Aether events right there. Insane. We see Zero getting the KO on Armada. Armada down to his final stock and fish. We thought Armada had a chance to get the KO against Zero and grab the smash ball during spawn. Wasn't able to do that. Yeah, I mean, that, that was kind of the flight of Squirtle, unfortunately. Not like a huge uh, amount of damage output in a quick amount of time unless you combo it. So Squirtle wasn't able to get the job done. And I just came through swinging and he destroyed my man Squirtle. Why you gotta do Squirtle like that, man? A couple of down tilts by Zero, unable to connect. Armada doing a great job of jumping from the lower level to the top level and connecting with a couple of those aerial attacks against Zero. That up air does a great job. Ivysaur and Armada trying to hang on with their final stock, and Vicky, once again, Zero doing a great job making the most of he can with his extra stock advantage. Notice the pressure that Zero is applying on Armada as Armada's trying to find his footing back below the platform of Zero. Uh, he's trying to figure out a way to not get pressured as often. Yeah, I mean, the sword just does such amounts of damage and covers so much of the stage. I mean, the vines do a little bit, but against Squirtle, it's not working out very well, and the vines only he's, hit he's at, like, pretty much one smash, kind of away, one smash attack so away from dying. Ike's sword is putting in so much work right now. We see Zero and Ike trying to gain the upper ground on the ramps and try to get some there of those is. down tilts. Forward air, oh, not enough to send Ivysaur oh. off the stage. Can yeah, he recover? He recover? No, the vine is too short. Needed a little bit more sunshine, water, and fertilizer to get that one to the edge of the stage. And we see Zero doing a great job of not only edge guarding, but getting the smash ball. It seemed like Vicky, that really turned the entire tide of this match. Although he had lost his stock in the moment where the smash ball appeared, he still managed to capture the smash ball. But around the end there, as you notice, that Ivysaur was unable to grab the ledge. Magnet hands isn't as significant in this game, Jordan. And we see with Ike a heavy character, but you also have a lot of range with that sword. What else do you see from Ike in this edition from the little bit of gameplay we've seen for one of those signature Fire Emblem characters here, Vish? I, I feel just like a little bit faster. And I think even on uh, th that stage that we played on Mori, it, it just felt like he could traverse <clears> the trajectory uh, the, well, you know, I mean, the so it. much better. With his side B was an amazing recovery. The vertical uh, recovery that he normally has was strengthened by that stage so much. So it just felt like none of the Pokemon could get a significant KO on him. But every single time he was just in there with there with the sword. So. Yeah, we never saw Charizard in that match for Pokemon Trainer as well, too. Let's take a look at the bracket after that match. We obviously have Zero getting the victory over Armada. Zero will advance in the winner's round to the finals of the winner's round prior to the grand finals. Up next in our winner's round, reminder, Smash Ball on, items off.
MK Leo versus Mango. And you were talking about MK Leo a little bit earlier here, Vicky. Zero had that unbelievable year in 2015, hmm. won 56 straight tournaments. But many people say the youngster, MK Leo, could be the second coming. Yeah, he re revolutionized the way that Marth played in a sense where uh, consistently was able to master his spacing, um, was able to change the way Dancing Blade <laughs> even worked with Tipper mix ups. So, seeing how he's going to be going into this game, uh, you already saw him display Bayonetta. Uh, so, he does have two other characters that he can use, Jordan. Let's take a look at those character <laughs> cards for both MK, Leo, and Mango as they get set. We remind you, they drafted three players. You have to use all three players at least once before you use another character again. You can write them out. Oh, and you look at MK, Leo. You've got either Snake or Sonic for Mango. You've got the Inkling or Link as an option. And you look at a 1v1, and let's start with Mango here, Fish. You've got Inkling, you've got Link. It's a 1v1, so you can really focus and concentrate your strategy. Who do you think you might want to lean on here? I mean, uh, Inkling, I feel like, might do a little bit better in one-on-one -on -one because it, uh, some of the dynamics of Ink is that if you throw Ink on your opponent, they get more uh, damage subsequent hits. If you have Ink on the ground when you use your roller, it causes the opponent to slide or walk slower while it's on it. So I feel like you could even tech chase a little bit with the side B, and then from there you can have the slower movement work really well in a one-on-one -on -one type situation. Link is also really good. Yeah, because we're getting a new uh, Mario Party. His bombs <laughs> detonate. After they didn't you hit say if it has again. online play, so though. there's there's like a lot but of setups the you could do, and you can uh, play as a little Goomba. bit better in one-on-one -on -one situations with both those characters. I have a feeling that he's gonna go inkling. I was yes, and Mega going inkling, fulfilling the fans' desires and wants. Wah 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 wah. wah. Sonic versus oh. oh. the inkling. Mango as the inkling, and already we see. Sonic, a very fast, speedy character. You're going to have to be really accurate against him, Vicky. Yeah, Mango was uh, telling me how he really likes the way that Inkling plays, and he would probably want to play Inkling uh, when it comes to this game. Character has a lot to offer, especially coming from the Splatoon series. Uh, you want to keep your eye out for that final smash, so you're going to see Mango try to go for the it killer whale. Yeah. I love this You see this the place. ink cartridge next to the Inkling. You've got to remember, you have to refill that. You can hold shield and B if you want to refill it. All of your ink-based attacks need to use that ink and so not only are you managing the stage here fish but it's ink management as well too if you're inkling for sure i mean the ink on the ground might not do too much against a speedy guy like sonic and i just gotta say i love that we're playing on saffron city that is amazing that it's come back into this game yeah sabrina and her psychic pokemon getting a great show here with mango and mk leo as both sonic and the inkling don't don't forget, Smash Balls are on, oh. and here it comes. Let's go ahead and dial that up here. Sonic trying to get it. Oh, but MK Leo sending the Inkling out of the stage has a 3-2 stock advantage and a Smash Ball. So, Vicky, it's all about the timing when you use this. And here comes oh, Super Oh, my Sonic. God. Hey, you don't control it this time around, but MK Leo creating a gigantic wave, preventing Mango from landing, but unfortunately not dealing as much damage as we thought, Jordan. Yeah. MK Leo, 3-2 advantage, 75-32. You look at the health, 75 for MK Leo, 30 for Mango and a nice little up air by MK Leo as he continues to keep the Mango and the Inkling at bay here, Fish. Yeah, and I think the because of how tall this stage is, it's kind of working out for Sonic. Yeah, you gotta you get the MK Leo going on the right side bottom and not really fearful because he has the huge double jumps and he has the up B as well. Ooh. But uh, yeah, ni nice stock for Mango taking it. As you saw in that moment, actually, uh, he used the up smash and it was able to KO us early because when uh, Inkling splats people and you have paint on yourself, the ink that sticks makes you take more damage in that instance. You saw that up smash pulling out the oh, blaster, the backwards. Inkling able to make it 2-2. Now let's see if Mango can make a comeback. Beautiful fare there by MK Leo trying to keep Mango at bay. The roll dodge into the back throw, sending Mango off the stage. Oh, oh and the oh. edge guard by the fair. How about that right there, Fish? Yeah, I mean, he read the jump beautifully and got that back here. He's, he's putting in work right now. I can't, I can't say anything negative by MK Leo. MK Leo, 2 1 stock advantage over Mango. Mango already at 47% damage. And Vicky, it seems like MK Leo doing a terrific job of juggling Mango in this matchup. He is not letting so... Mango hang out. At all, um, whatsoever on this stage, MK Leo, you can tell he's here to stay in this tournament, even if it means eliminating <laughs> his own teammate, bitch. 
Yeah, I mean, it really feels um, like MK even Leo, the neutral game is like being led by MKLeo. Just the hitboxes he's throwing out, Mega's kind of going into them, or reading where he's zero going. Retired. And he's getting all these combos, the up airs. Like, Stringing the up airs. Like, what can Mango do? Can he back? Mango at 120, MKLeo at 42. MKLeo looking for one more splat on Mango at this point. You see the jab combo, <laughs> that's going to cover Sonic with all sorts of being. And if you're Mango, you got to connect on a couple hits at this point. You know that Sonic's going to take much more damage if you can connect. Oh but I know. Oh, the forward smash by the ink covered Sonic will go ahead and allow him to take a victory shower after that as MK Leo advances. And Vicky, as we said, and as Vish pointed out, really MK Leo dominating the neutral game and dominating the aerial game as well, too, against what we saw there in Mango and the Inkling. Yeah, aside from trying out a different color, he was able to make sure that Mango had a really hard time landing onto the ground and consistently juggled him, Jordan. Let's take a look at the updated bracket after that matchup and see what's happening here. And you see the couple of victories that we had in the winner's round, which means what a matchup we'll have. Zero versus MK Leo here in the next winner's matchup. 1v1, both of those fighters able to advance on. We'll obviously move to the elimination bracket at this point as we get set for our next matchup there. And like we said, different set of rules in the elimination bracket. We now have a four-player free-for-all. Smash ball on, items on between Abadongo, Plump, Armada, and Mango. So, Vish, you look at the rules, the four-player free-for-all. Where do you begin with strategy in this one? Well, I, I see that there's three melee players in the elimination round. I see that the, the finals have got two uh, Smash Brothers for Wii U. Come on, Melee players, I know you have it in you. But as we go into this, I feel like um, it's going to be interesting because there's more items on, as, as you're talking about, and I feel like that's going to introduce a lot of different kind of entropy into the match. So there's going to be a, a definite random factor, so I feel like faster Fair characters still, are going to be works. a little bit better in this kind of setting. And characters like, I'm I feel like Gandorf was a good example, or Ike was a really good example, where they're like relatively fast, but they hit super hard in the air, so they can still uh, hmm. get the smash ball when they need to. So characters like You've that are going to really Pokemon. work out well. And let's look at the yeah. character card and see who Dude, might I play be a lot seeing of that this too. four player free for all Actually, smash ball on, items on as well to too. Out. Abadongo down to Mewtwo, Plup with Pit, Armada with Kirby, and Mango with Link. And so really, Vicky, a collection of some light characters, Link being your heaviest one out there. Yeah, and I'm so happy that we're going to finally be able to see Breath of the Wild, Link Jordan. So it's going to be uh, seeing how Link uses his bow and arrows. We saw that in the direct earlier. Uh, he is able to pick up his own arrows and use double arrows whenever he uses his bow. Yeah. Let's get set for this four-player free-for-all. As a reminder, only one player advances out of this matchup. So a lot on the line here as we continue along in the Super Smash Brothers Invitational 2018. I, I actually, Mewtwo is also a very cool pick because of how much space his tail takes. Uh, takes if you do down tilt nice, or forward dude. tilt, it kind of just Onyx hits is good. pretty decently hard. It can combo well, and it takes up a Especially lot of space. Get, so I like, think Mewtwo is also a really strong pick in this like kind of setting. It. And Vicky, you look at Mewtwo's tail and Link's sword, and a lot of times you hear some of these competitive players talk about disjointed hitboxes and hitboxes. How do those come into play with these characters? As we see Midna, the assist trophy, make an appearance. Uh, they do a really good job at controlling spacing in general, and look at Abba taking advantage of the healing field right there. He was lingering around it, and it allowed him to heal within the battlefield. So you're going to want to keep your eye out for these items. Oh, oh we see the up smash into the air right now, and already Pal flipping the screen upside down and this is interesting against human characters the controls are reversed and so you might see a lot of these players not move as much at this point here Vish. yeah they kind of just stood still everyone was just like what 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 is going on here I don't understand where I am so everyone just took a little a little breather so it seems oh the my characters goodness, fly the away down air very fast when you hit them and then there's a slowdown within this free brawl. Oh, you guys you watch for that, ball. okay so using all his jumps to get up there but no mango mango gets it and oh it missed um, <laughs> so if you watch Guardians, the players, when they hit someone and they fly away, they fly them. away super Abadango, fast from you. And then they, there's a slowdown. But all four stocks available. He's doing a pretty good job at trying to edge guard Notice that? Armada, makes it back into the stage. Watch Armada it happen the next time. Okay, Plum see? They both flew away super fast. Assist trophy on play. Oh, so, and we have 
a Nintendo. Oh, that's a good boy. That's a good boy. <laughs> Why is it a Nintendo in Smash? Who's a good boy? Oh, yeah. Directional air dodge is back from Magic Creek. Um, perfect shielding is done differently from how it was done last time. Um, it seems like L canceling where you, uh, where you basically cancel the lag animation on your landing. Up is just doing a great job at um, just edge guarding nearly everyone on this It seems like that map. that is in there like brawl. See Mango on the left hand side of your screen as Link getting Which back was, up on the stage trying to edge guard against Armada. It was a technique in brawl. Shadow Balls well too. A couple of those three piece items still up for grabs. Nobody has one in their arsenal at this point. Yep. Love trying to clear things out. I'm going to take a wild a guess job. and say as well too. Oh, and here comes even Bomberman. though the directional air dodge is in there. Oh, no. uh, not wave dash because people would certainly be doing that. Link able to hang on, but the shadow ball connects with Link on the left-hand side of the screen, and Mango down to his final stock here, Fish. Yeah, that's another great part about music. So it does, it does operate differently. I, it does seem like it's way more than, like, a deluxe version or something like that, because they actually changed the end. They actually changed how a lot of characters work. Like, it's not just the character carried over. The art style is different. The model is updated. However, let's make that two. And Armada's your leader with three stocks at 117. Much more and work than you usually go into like, oh, okay. like a very basic. But yeah, like you're, like you're saying, uh, uh, it felt like Abaddon or um, Fluff had the advantage for quite some time, and then Armada kind of just snuck into like, the lead. There was just even, some careful play. Now he's play staying exactly on the top like, platform like that, so he doesn't get hit. And yeah. he gets the smash ball. Armada with some optimal play right now. Ford, Kirby and Armada with the smash ball. One, two, three, three couple of yeah. combos. Has Link spinning right now, and that's going to send Mango out of the game at this characters. point. Here's Electrode in the middle of the map, getting ready to explode. Players cautiously keep board. their space. Up, oh, that's a dud. Hold on, keep an eye out for that, though. Oh, you can oh, God! Oh, <laughs> fire, and Mewtwo's eliminated by Electrode. <laughs> and now it's down to Plump and Armada. Both fighters relatively at the same percentage health. Armada as Kirby, Plump as Pit. Only one fighter can advance, um, and now it shifts to one-on-one. -on -one. You can do short hop aerials. As you can see, Armada uh, was playing multiple ways. There's multiple Brett button presses. If you hold A Plum, while you jump, you do a short hop aerial. Or you do a short hop while you, you, do, you hold A, then hit the jump button. Kirby Air Ride is going to make an appearance. No! Oh, shit! Oh, and he misses! And he misses! Um, but you can't see. Plump able to air dodge. And that's a critical point right there. That is an amazing air dodge. It felt like Armada was just watching him go every time. He felt like he was just actually waiting for that defensive option. But Plump just delays it even more slightly. When, Ar when Plump, Armada uh, played uh, Project M, Kind of pushing Armada, Armada into played, the left side of the um, stage. He's doing a little bit of comboing. You see Armada, what he's trying to do is stay underneath Plump and get pit. his up tilt combo started. Project M pit is pretty and, uh, different. A decent amount of percent right now on Plump. Plump doing a great job of blocking and punishing anytime Armada tries to come in with an attack. Both fighters unable to really connect, but here comes the side throw by Plump. Another item, that's going to be an air ball. Sends Armada off the side of the screen, but you know Kirby has that terrific recover. Here comes the warp star. Kirby trying to hop in his ride and close this thing out. He's got the warp star. Oh my god. Oh, he checked off the side of the stage. He walked. Okay, so he... Oh, Z Tagumaru deconfirmed. Tagumaru deconfirmed as a character. Round. And how about that? The back and forth, but let's point out that highlight, that tech off the stage that we saw there, Vish. Yeah, so he had actually there's a, a warp star on the left side of the stage. Armando It'd be cool just if like, they no, show that. I'm not even gonna go for it. He goes for <laughs> the down actually... air, and then he had to recover, so he goes for the up B, and then oh, I didn't see that. I'm just gonna that and make it. A couple of highlights in this match, and Vicky, one of them came from the beautiful air dodge by Plup. You thought Kirby had things on set, ready so to he, go to clear oh, this out. Take us through what we see. No, show us the, see, show us the tech off 
the wall. Himself to hit him and wait for the perfect opportunity to hit Plup. But in the perfect moment, look how Plup was able to avoid the shot. Immediately after that air dodge, he felt like he was unsafe, but was able to dodge right on time. Oh my God. Unbelievable display of being able to oh, dodge, including show the, the fact that we talk about the multiple show the dodges that you do attack. here, Vish, the less effective they are. That was are. actually yeah, pretty I good. Mean, uh, as if you Wait. do a spot dodge or roll uh, each time, it has a little bit more lag on it, so it becomes sluggish. So the game itself is not trying to prom it, uh, it's promoting aggressive style of play. So if you're rolling and spot dodging quite a bit, it actually becomes slower and easier. So they to punish. they specifically so, change well, the even with that kind of disadvantage on the, the dodging options, mechanics in the game to make to people do, do it less. The, spot, to the air dodge into the roll to, to avoid force that, people that to be KO. more aggressive. That's crazy. Completely change the like. match. Let's take a look at the updated bracket hmm. as we continue to eliminate more and more fighters as we move along here in the Super Smash Brothers Invitational 2018. Plup will move on. Which he makes will me wonder if like the loser of MK Leo and Zero coming up here next. But if they've changed the percentage. On the, the stuff high stakes play with our professionals and I mean, we know that it's different for doubles and singles. That. Give it up once again for TK Breezy. So does that mean the matches will go faster? This is one of the reasons how like, like how they decide how many stocks people do for. Anyway, Vicky, how's it been? TK it's been insane. How are you guys doing with the new Super Smash Brothers Ultimate? You can taste that energy. You can you can really just pull that energy out the air right there. So, with that being said, again, we have another free for all match for you guys. Six minutes, all items, and Smash Balls on. But this time, we have some special guests. So I'm gonna bring out these special guests real quick. Our first special guest being Devin Graham. And coming up against Devin Graham will be Alana Pierce. Also joining these two Using the DJ will be Andre Meadows. Oh, it reminds me of the other day when like and to round out this crew of homies is the ultimate homie, Zelda Williams! Everyone knows it. They heard that they know the name, they know who it is, man. So here we are. It's gonna be as I said, another free for all six minutes. Okay, all items, Smash Bros. So it's gonna get a little chaotic here on the stage, but Vicky, what do you expect us to see? So, Zelda Williams, yeah, no stranger right. to you're all of us right in the magic. community. Great. We saw her from the last Super so, Smash Brothers stones, Invitational. I believe representing the power, Link, like all the stones so are pretty important I'm in the game. I'm actually pretty excited to see it who should be playing the properties now, and moves, but and then... we can't count our other fighters out either. I got a little inside information in the you're back. You're going to get so many of those eventually just from playing. As we seem like, to be ready. Everyone's gearing up, ready to go. I got to get the the bird's eye view, basically. I'm taller than all of them, so I can just... You know? Not me, TK. <laughs> Alright, let's get a better view. Let's get a better view. Did it? Yeah, it is Robin Williams' daughter. Remember, she so was at the last Bilger, one. Kirby, Pac-Man, and Sheik. Devin yeah, she Bilger, was actually named uh, when Robin the Williams and, and his wife were having Sheik, uh, her. So, hey, she's they were playing she's a lot of Zelda, and that's how they came up with her name. Sheik. Now you guys could see Sheik at her finest within the new Super Smash Brothers game. And TK, how destructive! Hey, Master Ball, that's a legendary. We got Kyogre. That's a big, that's a big pickup as a Pokemon. As you can see, he's just going to be blasting you off the side if you don't have a great recovery. Oh. That's exactly what happens to you. Neither Villager nor Kirby able to get back from that situation. And now we have a solid lead. And look at Andre just chilling. He knows he's good right now. Holding on to 52%. Throwing the Hydrant at them. And Alana pushing everyone away from her. Just wants to avoid Devin at all times. Look at the tree, TK. Hold up. We got Alatios on the screen. That's also a great Pokemon pickup as it's doing a lot of damage. Sometimes if you're high up on damage, it will end up knocking you off. Unfortunately, this time for Zelda did not do such. And here we are in new assist. Gonna come back though. You think it's over, but it's never the magic over. Magic freak, there's this yeah, thing in the game where if you're playing, oh, they killed the right assist now, trophy. 
see, you know, the only person really, uh, the only person really legit killed right the assistant. Devin was um, this villager, but however, that has been a I guess you can do that. Um, that's right, they said you can do that. Um, so, is another KO right so when you're playing also, multiplayer, Zelda, sorry, I mean, Andre is sitting pretty. I mean, without even there the score, is. I, I feel like I haven't seen Andre really hit off the screen, so he's sitting pretty. And Alana getting a um, big sword kill. You do less damage job, to each other. When you're the more people on stage, so the more people playing, so my guess is eight player Smash people are gonna do even less damage. Uh, it goes back to normal when it's single player. So I don't not particularly sure why, besides the fact that when you have a lot of people on stage, you're more likely to get hit, I guess. So uh, maybe it's to extend the length of survivability in multiplayer matches. But my guess is that you're doing the same amount that you would usually do in single player matches. Uh, when you hit a big attack at a high percent that's going to send someone to their death, there's a slowdown and a zoom in. Kind of like uh, Little Max uh, with the uh, KO punch. Alright. So, now we got so that every character has that. Right I'm gonna go ahead and hit the rock drop. I mean, a very uh, signature Kirby move. Still does a lot of knockback here in this game, just as one would expect. Yes, it's in December. The, uh, December 7th. From the top rope. And every character that has ever been in the Smash Brothers game is in this game. So all the melee characters come back, all the brawl characters come back, all the Smash League characters come back. And they added Ridley and Daisy and Inkling. And I don't think that there's a chance they might reveal something else here. Um, he does have the same shirt as me. Um, not only that though, but it also shows and, you an indicator uh, as to who is in the lead. So you already know what it means when you see someone blowing. They said Bill Trennan said that they had more stuff to reveal later. So I'm sure we'll get more characters, and then we'll be DLC. Oh, okay, like you'll probably get a Fire Emblem okay, protagonist sure for the next year's Fire Emblem game. You'll probably get a new Pokemon for next year's new Pokemon game. There have been some like deconfirmations through. Oh, the build a bear. So did he get a did he stock off that? He did get a stock off that. I did see the uh, the KO good stuff to Devin actually drop it out of that final smash. It's a little late on the draw, but it does not matter if you're late to the party as long as you still turn up. Exactly it appears they, they have a new engine, they have uh, new models, they have a new some of them look like they have a new art direction. Zelda trying to linger sort of a little things. bit behind, not trying to get hit too often. I got some inside information for all the character picks so far. They've changed Honestly, how the, uh, they've the changed change, techniques in the game too. Like really There's stuff changes, that uh, is in Brawl that's in here so that was not in Smash Bros. Directional air dodges are there, and they give you a different way to do short hops, short hop aerials and stuff. So when he's a call the by holding down the A button when you, before you jump. A minute left here in the game, folks. And again, Zelda Williams lose another stock right here. Andre still probably sitting And if you notice, if you're watching, percent. okay, so uh, when someone hits an attack that sends someone flying, way, they fly away really quickly and, and then they slow down. down. They fly away quickly when the smoke's there and then they slow down. So you'll notice they all fly away really, like, like there was an explosion almost, but then there's like a slowdown afterwards. So I don't know if that's something that will stay in the final game. I don't know if it's something that people will want or not. So I don't know if, um, I don't know if that's something that they're going to get feedback on. I will say they will definitely get feedback on the game because there's literally like a million people there from the competitive scene and they were all invited by Nintendo so it seems kind of weird that they would invite all those players like literally invite them to try their game 
without maybe getting some feedback. I think Look, they're gonna I get feedback the from them. So the my game, guess, like, just from right okay, okay, this is my this guess. Andre, I think I with the, the creation of Nintendo versus and all this stuff, I know time. it's already so, an eSport. Their you biggest get one, get I think. For I think that they're gonna try and position it even more but as I in said, that man, realm, that was a lot of fun. We're gonna so get back to the glory part of this. We gotta see who's gonna make it to that winner's side finals. They do, along with the and other ones. Going for you right now, the Super Smash Brothers Invitational 2018. Throwing I it think back that to our that's the reason that they uh, invited those much. people. Big round of applause for TK Breezy once again. And it, would, it does seem kind of weird that they changed stuff in the engine when they didn't necessarily matches, need and, to. You know, Vish, you look at all the action that happens, and those items can certainly so, come into play when it's a four-player free-for-all. Because it just I'm, makes I'm more work. I'm seeing a trend of Pac-Man the in these. <laughs> well, what's going on there? My guess but, uh, is nothing would change. I really do feel like items in that way, unless Nintendo specifically asks that to the game, and I feel like you even at uh, the levels that the special guests, there, I feel like are, the items are, just add are, are even more kind of randomness, you know, just whoever gets it gets so much more of a power up. They're not going to be able to dodge nearly as well, you know. Let's get scene. set for a matchup well, in our we'll winner side, though. trying to find because a finalist out of that to get to grand finals. Let's you're putting the, the game out as like we get set big game what appears to be a Titanic matchup between Zero and MK You want to sell the game, but like it does kind of make me wonder about Items are off. The winner of this will move on to our grand finals. So many things. To, the character selection is well too. We like, know that both of like these fighters have used two guys two we expected to be so there. So by process of elimination, oh. it's going to be Sheik for Zero, Snake for MK Leo, and let's just put some more historical reference on this here, Vicky. A matchup of these two types of caliber of players. This is no strange match, Jordan. We are very if, used to uh, seeing if, if uh, these MK type Leo of players. Unfortunately, when Zero retired, we had not seen him play MK Leo for quite some time. So be, um, watching the comeback on this stage I, for the Super I Smash Bros. Like Invitational to, is insane. To, uh, zero Both these fighters position. getting set for a big time matchup, a spot in the grand finals as well, too. And Though, it does going to make me wonder how that these players have. This is a this game engine. that they haven't really had a chance to play for that long, but some of those same principles get ready to yeah, help them move wonder. along. Let's get set for action here, though. 1v1, MK Leo versus Zero. Oh, man. I'm actually, uh, it's crazy that Zero actually saved the Sheik for at this juncture of the tournament, because I feel like that's probably his strongest character in his arsenal just from uh, the little that we got to watch him play. Because the, the oh, forwarders still no. kind of blink in a very similar way to Smash for Wii U, and you, you get the uh, bouncing fish in a very similar way as well. But air dodges are not nearly as strong, so bouncing fish actually becomes like such a strong tool. Maybe you can tell yeah. us a little bit more about that, Vicky. Yeah, um, aside from that, uh, you could, I feel like bouncing fish actually comes out a lot quicker and the grenade, Sheik's grenade no longer sends her into free fall, so she is now able to recover without accidentally SD. Oh man. MK Leo at 49, Zero at 49, both these fighters still at neck and neck even at this point. Because it's, I mean, now we look at the advantage so in as Brawl, Zero doing a terrific was, job with the juggle off the stage here. He's all making, right. Like, yeah, again, Snake Meta Knight now was kind still of the king has bomb recovery. Uh, he could also throw a grenade in three different distances, depending on uh, how close to yourself that you hold the analog stick. And it's insane. Zero, though, showing that Snake but then also in Project nothing Zone. with that up smash. Catching his landing again, Jordan. Zero with the pair of up smashes gives him the early 3-2 stock advantage. And Vish already, we're seeing the speed of Zero versus MK Leo and Snake. Yeah, for sure. I mean, he's doing a really good job just kind of being underneath where uh, MK Leo is and he gets to those tilted and in his corner combos. That's just so kinda much damage, here. so much consistent damage from Zero. Feels like MKLeo can't get quite the same uh, damage out with it. He is he has looks the like all to himself and he gets it <laughs> along with the stock. Oh man. Oh, that's no! Awesome loose and it careens to a pin, but here comes another one. Can Zero snag it? Oh, it's gonna no. be MKLeo that grabs it. Excuse me, Zero with this. MKLeo gets the smash ball, trying to get Zero in his sight. Oh shot. man! Is it gonna be enough to get zero zero doing a That's fine job there, Vicky, hopping off stage? Yeah, zero doing a great job at avoiding I wonder what that the, final um, smash. Um, quite unfortunate, but it was meant to be. I wonder be what happens if we get thrown in the smoke. Do you literally Steve get Jordan. like paralyzed? Couple of up tilts by zero right here into the jungle, the mid air. Beautiful job of the forward air, and we see zero continuing to apply that pressure here, Vish. Yeah, and uh, another uh, strong part of Sheik's play in this uh, particular iteration is that the back air is really, really Ooh. strong. So any kind of off stage edge guard that you get like that might actually KO and get a forward smash still not quite great DI from MKLeo. 
MK Leo try MK Leo trying to recover at this point. That up B gets him on the edge, but then the one-two grab to the side throw. Nicely done by Zero right there, Vicky. Yeah, and as you can see, Snake's Opto is still as strong as those who have played Super Smash Bros. Brawl have witnessed. It also kills. So it still has uh, you've when you're on the siphon, you yourself. still have oh, the yeah, bit definitely, of. Uh, definitely. And even uh, you saw MK Leo coming back with the up B. It does have like a bit of super armor, so even though uh, Zero hit it, it did not actually knock him out of it. And now he's so, yeah, he still so has the super hiding. armor. That's with a great mix. He dropped the bomb at the same time, so it was actually kind of scary for Zero to go there and edgeguard him. Andy, Andy, what a play from MK Leo to do the bomb. What the <laughs> hell? Did he put the bomb on the? Did he put the bomb on the side of the stage? Or did he? Yeah, did he strap the C4 to the side of the stage? Is that what he did? Oh my god, this is why I love here. Snake back in the day, because of the crazy setups with the C4. Oh no, no. Zero getting carried off the stage. He is relentless. Oh my god, he's, he brought this the, all the way back. Man, that's, that's so much percent out there, and I, I like the way that MKLeo is playing. He's just kind of staying back and putting mines, putting uh, grenades. But Zero just kind of dashed in, because that's a really good play against this kind of defensive style. And he's, he's got needles of his own. He's got some Yeah, he's playing kind of campy, See a couple but of grenades I mean, come I feel out, like he kind of has to. At at this point. Zero at 90%, oh. MKLeo 48 oh. Zero sent to the top of the screen. Still able to hold on there, though, Vicky. And I like how Leo is hanging around the right side of the platform, watching it go up and down, and acknowledging where he can throw his grenades to continuously pressure Zero. Yeah, and Zero also kind of making a, a good advantage of that same uh, particular location by kind of just jumping and forward airing as soon as he sees MK Leo going end up strong. Oh, he goes with the oh, bounce. Oh, that was close. The top. This, is, this is crazy. Oh. By MK Leo to get back on stage. Oh my god. I thought he was going to strap C4 to him. Stay alive on the upper platform. MK Leo trying to put some pressure on Zero to find his way into the grand finals. Can Zero cause a comeback here, though? MK Leo, Zero, both trying to figure each other out. Oh. Here comes a chuckle from Zero here. Fish. Oh my god. Off stage. Oh, the bouncing fish. Fish. Oh, the bouncing fish. Oh my god. Oh, oh. Look at this pop off. He's popping off, man. He, how did he make that comeback? He was down like 50, 60% the entire time, and he goes for a bouncing fish right at the end. You, that was so smart of him because he recognized that Leo had been using his rolls quite often around the end, and as we discussed the mechanic, defensive play is not as rewarded as aggressive play. Right. And you obviously see just how tightly contested that matchup of MK Leo and Zero was, but you looked at the pressure that mm. it, Zero was able to apply with Sheik throughout the entire match, and MK Leo using a lot of those bombs and projectiles from Snake to keep him at bay. It wasn't enough, though, to overcome. Take us through this instant replay here, Vish. Yeah, so he's, he's, he's recovering high. He uses the bomb there as he's dropping it, so it's kind of a, a, a big mix-up, so it doesn't seem like he's going to hit him, but he actually ends up... Igniting yeah. the bomb right at the end, it takes out both of them on that right side stage. Yeah, and makes it even when he was the, down um, a little bit. That's crazy. I, I, I stakes right there. Let's take a look at the updated so bracket the, here in just a moment. But however, this is when it was one one here. Oh, this is like the, the main tournament fish. with like the, uh, the, final KO that the players that they brought in. Yeah, he they had little Leo side events with only um, option was like to make it back towards the stage. some YouTubers and celebrities. Zero gets the and, uh, victory. He will move on to grand had, like, good finals. MK Leo, and stuff. he's not done yet though. He'll take on. But they went back to like the, the main. finals of the elimination bracket. So we view that bracket and we see how MK Leo now moves on down to that smash ball on items on though for this one here Vish so this will certainly change the strategy up as both these fighters look to find a spot in the grand finals for sure for sure and uh, just with how close that was it feels like MK Leo is definitely hungry for that comeback to make it all the way back there but Plup is no no short on being a great competitor on his own and I curious I'm curious to see what the last uh character they have in that slot is because that's going to really determine no, how they this, last, this uh, one, no, they one is going to go. Well, let's take a look at the character cards for both of these but, fighters um, as they get set. As we said I think earlier, there's, there's each still a fighter chance. had to choose three characters and now the book is completely open. Now that you've gone it's through one of those three, where you can choose whomever you would like to. Right. We'll probably Ridley get one in like each direct that we have. MK Leo, Bayonetta, 
Snake and Sonic. So a plethora of choices here, Vicky. Yeah, I could definitely see uh, Leo most likely up for Sonic. He did do a really good job playing Sonic, so I could see him maybe contest with that or possibly Bayonetta, although the Snake showcase was pretty exciting. Coming from Pluff, we saw his amazing pit play, uh, consistently ledge guarding his opponent, so maybe we're going to see the pit come back. And Vish, if you're Pluff, do you maybe go with Ridley, a character that we haven't seen much of at all, because you know how well these players scout each other and know these characters in and out as far as yeah, attacking magic defending freak. against I, them. Do you it, throw he was a curveball there with Ridley, character. potentially? He's been yeah, I mean, because Ridley was so uh, recently announced, I mean, and they didn't get <laughs> I, uh, to play it very much, and the character design as a whole is just so new. Something like that could work crazy. out really well. I'm curious yeah, to see that. whether um, MK Leo would go Bayonetta because you can't really ladder the same way you do uh, ladder combo the same way you do as in uh, Smash for Wii U. So it's not quite as potent as it was, but it still kind of operates in a very similar uh, similar way. Just the combo style and the play style of Bayonetta. But we have Bayonetta versus Ridley. Plump is laying it all down on the line. And MK Leo going, uh, going Bayonetta. This is going to be a good one, guys. Yeah. Two of the most recent additions to the Super Smash Brothers universe and early on. Vicky, your thoughts on the character selection of what we've got going here at this 1v1? Well, I'm just so happy that we're going to finally see more showcase moves from Ridley. Uh, as those of you who was tuning, who were tuning into the Nintendo Direct, oh. Ridley's down B. Jeez. What the fuck? 40, 45%. He just had him in the corner there. Bayonetta couldn't do anything. How's it feel, Bayonetta? My God. Smash <laughs> ball on the stage. Bayonetta's going to go ahead and grab that. That'll make a huge oh, difference. Oh, man. And what we got going on here, Mesh. Oh, my He's God. Dead. That, oh, this is such a beautiful final smash. A bigger Ridley just destroyed Ridley. Is that what I just saw? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. MK Leo with the early 4-3 stock advantage. And then we see Bomber on the stage here. Vicky can pick that up. Oh, oh, man. And all of a sudden, it's 4-2 it MK Leo with a size advantage. not having good luck. Vicky. Yeah, and uh, although MK Leo does have the advantage, Ripley does have the damage output necessary to make this comeback. Oh, yeah, for sure. We saw that the, uh, the downbeat does, what, 51? Oh, no! Oh, it's still in the game. Oh, God. Well, that's Smash 4. No! Taking Plump to cruising out to Hutoon and a couple of KOs. MK Leo trying to hang on, really trying to get the punish off the edge of the edge. Oh, oh, that was so oh hard. Bayonetta unable to recover. Can Plump get back on stage with yes. Ridley? He certainly does, and it's now 3 1. But you see Plump at 106 trying to edge guard against Bayonetta. No, 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 no not again. And that is Jesus. Okay, MK Leo as well, Bayonetta. I, uh, Plump seems Ridley like she's the same. Top of the screen for Several KOs right there. Uh, uh, so oh, disregard what I said earlier. Bayonetta still, still got it. Bayonetta's back on the block, looking as great as ever. Looking. <laughs> <laughs> well, we talked about it before. Oh, when you get no. your hands on a new character like Ridley, you don't get a lot of hours to put that practice in and understand every yeah. single nuance. And then obviously Bayonetta. Every player is going to be different in each new game of the yeah. Super Smash Brothers series. And we saw MK Leo. Just an absolute technician. Well, she right actually there, probably will uh, get yeah, nerfed I mean, in this he game. Told me himself, he was like, I'm going to play uh, Bayonetta and I'm going to show everyone once. what I could do with her. She used to actually be better Smash when she first Brothers came out. Ultimate Jordan. Oh my God. But she's still Let's go ahead and insane. take a look at the bracket as we get set for our grand finals here shortly. <laughs> and MK Leo advancing the out of the elimination bracket yeah. had a very short stay there. Like, way Did better than Zero Six. Our grand finals are set. MK Leo it's, it's versus Zero. Those, it will be a best uh, of three jumps. between these two. And you have the and option get... for a bracket reset if MK Leo is victorious. But before we get to that, let's go ahead and bring out our man, Basically TK in front of everybody. to tell us what's coming up next. <laughs> yeah, I, I think maybe... Really doing something, yeah, I, mean, I'm I think talking. I think MK Vish. Leo might have just pointed out Vish, something that last to match was disgusting. Yeah, Bayonetta's pretty good. Vish. <laughs> Vish, you don't understand, okay? We thought we were getting away. We thought. <laughs> you thought wrong, TK. We thought wrong. We thought wrong. But what we're not getting away from is some more high flying matches, obviously, man. And I got some great guests for you. So we're going to go ahead and introduce some real quick. And up first, that is. The WWE superstar, Ooh. Ember Moon. Ooh. Okay. 
but just so you know, MK Leo is American not like a bayonet of man. So. Mike Daniels. He's not actually a Bayonetta main, oh so I think he was. Hey, Coley. I think. Hey, Angel. I think he was just literally trying to show also Sakurai right now, him. like, hey, this Will character is really good. It might be a good Olivia idea to, <laughs> to do something. <laughs> That's some real star power on this stage. Real star power. But for the Smash boys and girls out there, the leader of the Naifu Nation, Naru! Nairo! Hey! Nairo there he is. Somehow Nairo makes it. <laughs> Look, he's a celebrity in his own right, okay? He always definitely is. seen his sub count? It's crazy. Yeah. The Naifu Nation is killing the Naifu so Nation happy right now. Oh my. This, this, so uh, this seems a little bit. <laughs> Alright, now I know you're probably like, man, this seems a little bit one sided. Uh, well, it's a new game. We kind of even it out, okay? We even it out. It's a new game. Check it out. It's a 3v1. Is that, oh! Oh! Is it? Is it, is it really a 3v1? Is I'm not. 3v1? Look at the screen. Look at the screen. It's a 3v1. What is that? Let's go. It's a 3v1. It's a 3v1. <laughs> <laughs> oh, get him. Three Nairo. versus one. Can Nairo do it? This is a, it's a 3v1. All the, all the rest of the rules are still the same. So Nairo, you know, he uh, it's six minutes. <laughs> items. It's no team attack. No team attack? 3v1, no team attack, six minutes, items, and smash ball. Poor Nairo. Can he do it, okay? Can oh he really overcome? This is your chance, Nairo. This is your chance at the Invitational. You better shine, my man. I, honestly, man, look, when I was backstage, I was talking to him, okay? I was talking to all the stars, you know, and yeah, I was yeah. telling him, I was let him know. I said, look. Oh, 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 dang. Let's go, Let's go, okay. Let's go, uh, I wonder who the crowd favorite is, TK. What do you think? <laughs> oh, hey, he's going snake. He's Listen, going snake. I said it. I said it. I said it. I said it. I was like, look here. Okay. Naro, regardless of what happens on the stage, all right? The crowd was going to be on his side, but I told them as well. If they beat Nairo in this format, you don't have to give the specifics. Just tell people you beat Nairo. That's it. Yeah. Just, tell, just specific. tell people you beat Nairo. You beat Nairo in the first game of Smash Ultimate. That is quite, quite the reputation to have. That is, that is very true. I mean, honestly, if he, was in, if he was in the tournament himself, he could have been in the finals as well. But now we're going to see if he's going to be able to clutch it out. Again, no team attack, okay? <laughs> so they can just throw moves at him. The entire time, three, he wanted to deal with it. Oh my god. He's yeah, like, yeah. Okay. And the, the costumes, oh, okay. or the, the, the ults in this game are, so are, nice. are nice. The ults in this way, game I mean, are nice. He's not even on the DK deck. Oh, oh he, got, he got killed by an item. Oh, Ember Moon is in it. Not just in WWE, she's got it in Smash too. She's got it all. It's in the character by now. Think about this. Check this out. Mike is actually holding it down with the grenades too. I want to see. Oh, oh he's not this? holding anything down except for that stock loss. So oh, uh, no. either way, Nairo's back on the board now. Even though it is a three for one, Nairo does kind of slightly have an advantage because it's <laughs> everyone. Like, look, you got to think about it like this. If everyone on the team, on either team, gets KO'd, Nairo gets three points. They get one. But every time they KO him, he gets one. They only get one total. Right. Oh, oh my Actually. God. Oh. The Nairo. Nairo. Please, smile. He's smiling. He's, like, he's, he's so, so happy. He's so happy. Oh my God. The Nairo Nation is strong right now. I need to see it again. I need to see it. Again. I need to see another. That's a Nairo combo. It's, now. it's a replay. Oh, and is he gonna get the Smash Ball? That's a real one too. Is Who's he gonna, gonna get, get the Smash Ball? Oh, he's keeping everybody at bay. Oh. The back airs are flying. They're trying to get. Oh, hold up. Oh. Coming back though. on the other side. Nairo. Still not getting the oh, ball. Oh, get it, Mike! Somebody ah. get the ball! Red team, get the ball! Donkey Kong Kirby, somebody help them! <laughs> My man TK is, he, he's done, he's done, he's done. There's three of you! <laughs> all right, all right. Now, you know what, we'll keep moving though. That's 
Smash Brawl was ever meant to be. That's all. That could have been the game winning Smash Brawl, right? But no. I mean, we got another, no, we got the match minutes, is so long. However, I could have got it back in the lead at the very least. Like, oh, and Mike with the forward smash. Not going down without a fight. Definitely not going down with a fight, man. Mike, he's been trying to stay on top of Nairo the entire time. Somebody. Oh, oh everybody get oh. a piece. Oh my god, do you oh. see the way he grounded him with the side beam? They just went to town. Oh, that was him. actually an OD team yes. bomber right there. Yes. All over the place. They say, hey, hey, hey. Look at me, man. I'm putting put him in the ground. You oh, gonna do some extra damage. I got the crash to the back. Nairo gets the scissor, though. The throwback. Throwback Pokemon. Let's go. So Nairo, as I said, you know, even though Nairo uh, is successful to taking more damage than him, uh, you know, over time because of them all being on a team, he right. has all of them pretty much in KO percentage. Yeah, and he, he can just go up three right now. Yeah, in, in like a span of two minutes. Okay, he gets back. Look at that. Oh, oh that's two points right. I think he just curved it. Oh! Oh! Okay. Send the punch. Olivia, yeah. oh, she was going big. She was going big for it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Oh! Oh, oh my God! He, oh! He's igniting on him. Nairo, you oh. can't do this to these people. Oh. Dude, Nairo's killing it. Listen, we got two minutes left, and Nairo's already done two amazing combos. On these. I mean, he just the entire team gets in the combo, too. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Okay, the side, they're doing the Donkey Kong side B again. I think that's a great combo starter that they need to get more of. Got right. the, the Fire Flower. Oh, all right, that's good. Okay, that's good. Okay, hold on, hold on. This could be big. This, this could be big. And he gets the aim. But we got it. Yes. Crucial. That was a necessary stock to take. Honestly, Ember has kind of been putting the team on the back, man. I, I could have yeah. saw a one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, man. I'm just saying, I could have saw a one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, yeah. So right now, though, what I, what I have noticed, oh. okay. So this assist trophy, it just zooms in the screen, but as the screen is zooming in, so do the blast zones. So as the blast zones are getting closer, anyone getting hit now is more susceptible to lose that stock. Oh. Just as we see DK in the background taking an up tilt at like six, and then he's gone. Man, that's crazy because on three-on-ones, like you're talking about, Nairo could just get really quick KOs with the Squid Sisters. Oh my God! All right, Olivia taking taking one off Nairo. Uh, uh, then the, and the black hole. Oh, oh the fake one! He's, he's igniting everything. He's got the full. He's got the full item combo. <laughs> he puts a black hole with the hammer. How does he do it? <laughs> can't get through that. Okay, okay. Nero, we got another one. It's OP. We're dropping it. Oh, Volt tackle. Oh, Volt tackle misses its mark though. All right. Well, to be real, if she didn't know about the changes, honestly, yeah, I forgot to. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. I forgot to. We'll no. give that to her. <laughs> So good stuff. I mean, regardless to the uh, to the red team, they managed to get some great stock off of Nairo. But Nairo has also been getting some crazy like three v one KOs. So. And, and Nairo's just kind of staying, using his recovery a little bit more, just staying off the stage. Come on, man. Okay, and then he fi finally losing the stock. And they're re they're they're synchronized. You see that the way they're waiting right before he came down. Yeah. They, they figured it out. Yeah, man. Here we go. Uh, I kind of want to see Nairo still go in here. Let's see if he can get one last combo in these last 17 to 15 seconds here left and on the clock. Oh, oh. I mean, he's got, he's, oh, he's actually got the most percentage, so they can, they might be able to get a, a stock here. Oh, oh they can't you get a stock. That's, that, oh, that might be something. Well, he fast fall, he's fast fall. Maybe think he's going to get the barrel, but he did not. Oh, yes. oh, all right. All That'll right. do it. That's good. Let's see who ends up getting the win here. Oh, no, it's Nairo. 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 See those points? I need to see those points. All right. Oh, good for him. All right, guys. And that was a beautiful exhibition match. Again, give it up to our competitors here. <laughs> he really wanted to be in this. The action does not stop, man. We got to get into the grand finals here of our Super Smash Brothers Invitational 2018. I'm gonna throw it back to the casters. We're gonna get this thing going. Give it up one more time for TK Breezy. Excellent job bringing them out there. And as you said, we're getting set for the grand finals. MK Leo versus Zero. And just sort of put this into perspective as far as these players, their history, how great they are, Vicky. We talked a little bit about this. It's sort of the present and the future as far as domination in the Super Smash Brothers community. I just want to say that after this Invitational, if Zero gets this two-step, if Zero proceeds with the second win of an Invitational, then he better come out of retirement because we are finally seeing our Grand Finals match, Zero versus MK Leo.
Indeed. Yeah, and, and he's pulling out the Scarf again. Let's go. Scarf Army in full effect. But as we saw in previous um, the previous match, that all three characters are unlocked again so they can start from fresh. Smash Ball is off. Items are off. So it's Great. probably going to be... Gonna nice be... One -on -one, clean little one -on -one. Stage hazards will be off as well, too. So you do it's get a pretty good replica of some high-level competitive play some... between these unless two. There is the opportunity for a bracket say, reset. Well, if if MK Leo could take the first best of three, but they're probably going to go with two. The bracket. It is double elimination, but if you're zero, they're two, two best characters from, from becoming the champion. So the last game. take me through well, I mean, some not of this best character strategy. Just we just saw like what MK best. Leo Vicky was able to do with Bayonetta. Did we see if Zero counters with Sheik, or what type of decision do you think we might see from these players? Um, I'm kind of expecting the Sheik. Uh, funny that you mention it, Jordan. Uh, Bayonetta. Is she going to be the best character in <laughs> Super Smash Brothers Ultimate Vish? <laughs> I mean, that, la that last set was kind of kind of crazy, dude. The, the ladder combo is still in full effect. But uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what Zero does, because I think MKLeo is pretty con uh, comfortable with his Bayonetta pick, just based on how things are going. I feel like Zero is going to go Sheik, because it felt like he got a few of his own combo initiations and combo setups going in terms of his forward airs, in terms of his bouncing fishes off stage. So I think that's the matchup we're going to see. But I mean, we could just see a curveball with something else. What do you think? Let's get set for these grand finals of the Super Smash Brothers Invitational 2018. MK Leo taking on Zero. Final destination. Smash ball off, items off. And we get set as these two titans get ready to square off against each other. The characters will be, oh, it's a B oh. of Mario for Zero taking on Bayonetta for MK Leo. So no surprises with MK Leo, but Zero going with Mario. Yeah, uh, Mario also had a lot of uh, decent up tilt setups that he had before, and even uh, the up air string really well. So I think this this could work out too. He's got the combo setups with Mario as well. I'm curious to see how this one goes. Grand finals, best uh, of three. Yeah, I think. So, but you have to. I think you have to have a fire Pokemon in your party. Magic Freak too. For anyone that evolves with stones or trades, you have to have another Pokemon of the same type in your party with you to help them evolve at level 36. Trying to play as safe as possible does not want to get caught in that witch twist, Jordan. Grab into the down throw from Zero, unable to turn that into a combo right there, and then you continue to look at the constant pressure that MK Leo is applying on Zero here, Vish. Yeah, it feels like uh, grab combos are not quite as potent. It, it's more just for like positioning. We saw him try to go for the upper air. We saw Bayonetta try to go with uh, her throw as well, and not really connecting too much. So I think Ariel's. Oh, that was amazing spacing to be right outside that hitbox. Zero's crazy. Double forward smash? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Zero doing a great job of blocking that down air from MK Leo Bayonetta. MK Leo at 95, Zero at 92. These fighters have been so equally matched throughout this tournament. Now comes the edge guard phase by MK Leo. Zero able to get back on the stage. MK Leo sending Zero off. Zero looking for the recovery. Able to get back on, Vicky. Yeah, I like the use of the cape right there. It's able to stall his recovery, but unfortunately not going to be enough as Leo continuously goes down there and edge guards him with the back air. Yeah, so it, uh, the, le the ledge has similar mechanics to Smash for You, where you get the ledge trump, but you don't get the back air afterwards that you do in Smash for Wii U. So going out there before you even get the ledge is a great way to get the edge guard. You saw him just get the hit before you could even contest the edge. Mario into the down tilt. Oh, oh we got the up, gets the up smash. smash against MK Leo, and it's now two stocks to two. Oh, the dash dance? Zero? It's moving really fast. Okay, the combo, and, and DI'd out of it. Okay, all right. All right, but no more up tilt combos here. But as I say that with the upper and then trying to go for that fair, Flood is still ready for him. MK Leo, though, makes it back onto the stage. Yeah, it, sounded, it looked like he was had, getting something started, especially with a border at the end and then using the flood and trying to cape right after. This is some high level already. I'm really liking what I'm seeing it's in this one. Be to get zero, zero able to avoid the KO from the juggle that we saw at the top. MK Leo so well known for that. It's 92 for MK Leo, 85 for zero. Down to two stocks here in our first of three in the grand finals, Vicky. Like to note that SDI is not as prominent within Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, although DI does become important at later percents. And unfortunately, 
with that air dodge, it's going to have too much lag to be able to recover back onto the stage. A mishap by zero. It's going to cost him a stock. It's now two stocks to one. And if you're MK Leo here, Vish, you want to make the most of this one stock oh. advantage. <laughs> but there goes that advantage. Yeah, that's Down that'll... to our final stock here in the first match of the Grand and Finals. Dash dancing looks good. Bayonetta with the up tilt. MK Leo at zero. Zero at 45% when it comes to health. Oh, oh we see the perfect shield right there. Yeah, and perfect shielding in this game uh, actually happens when the shield goes down. So you have to be shielding and then you let go at the proper timing and it does the perfect shield as opposed to previously where it would be where the shield came up. Bayonetta getting zero into that combo. Zero able to get out of there. MK Leo applying the pressure, the grab, side throw, trying to punish on the edge right there. Up B by zero to get back on stage, Vicky. Very smart of zero to keep his jump in that instance. And unfortunately, he's going to be getting out of it. Oh, first game will go to MK Leo and Bayonetta. Best of three in this grand finals. If MK Leo can steal two out of these three, we reset the bracket. What did you like from what he was doing with Bayonetta in that matchup? Uh, I like the way he was edge guarding. As soon as um, Zero was way far off, he was trying to shoot. And I, I think before Zero could even do the up Bs to get the ledge, he would go out there and do the edge guards. At the end, though, Zero tried to mix him up by doing the up E earlier and get on stage, and we see the magnet hands are not nearly as strong as they were before. So I'm liking the little mix-ups that we're, we're seeing from both of these players. Vicky, you pointed it out. We saw a little bit of a mishap from Zero. He went with that air dodge with Mario, and the lag is so long after that. We saw the self-inflicted KO, and that was a critical stock in this match. It's quite unfortunate. Um, Directional air dodge actually has a lot of ending lag, so you don't want to do it too high above the ground. You kind of want to do it closer to the ground so that way you can take advantage. But also at the same time, Jordan, we can't be dodging too much in this game or else it starts slowing down. It certainly does. Both these fighters have the chance to change their characters as they get set. So let's get you set for game two in this grand finals. We're looking for a potential bracket reset. If MK Leo can get the victory over Zero, Zero is just two games away from becoming our Super Smash Brothers Invitational 2018 champion. And we have Sheik versus Sonic, a couple of very speedy characters here, Vish. For sure, and uh, like we were mentioning before, just the, the, the tilt combos, the forward airs, the bouncing fish, it, it feels like Zero's definitely in his comfort zone here uh, going up against the Sonic. Sonic doing a great job early on with the grab into the down throw, getting the juggle early on. Both fighters spacing each other out, but MK Leo at only 8%, zero already with 62% damage. And Vicky, we see those throws by MK Leo and Sonic leading to some nice two and three hit combos. Yeah, MK Leo is doing a really good job at taking advantage of catching landings with wow. Sonic, uh, a character who is known to have some of the fastest speed in the game. Yeah, yeah, and then we see a lot of. Uh, Moves hitting into back air or even uh, out of throws as we're talking about doing the up air and then he does the up beef really cleverly to get out of Zero's range and then using the aerial drift to get back to the center stage. I really like this play and he's using the up beat there again to try to edge guard him as the bumper falls down. It does have a hitbox and an up smash coming out from MK Leo taking the first stock. MK Leo's up smash gives him the 3 2 stock advantage. MK Leo at just 55% as well, so he's going to try and certainly make the most of this. The crowd chanting MK Leo, the support for the young here as he tries to upset zero another grab Vicky into a juggle and we see MK Leo dominating the aerial game here early on yeah zero finally finding his footing onto the ground and how exciting would it be Jordan to see a bracket reset and more characters on the screen now we see Leo taking advantage of sonic speed yeah and he's doing a really good job while zero is above him just kind of homing in and uh, figuring out where exactly he's going to go and then connecting it to up airs and back airs as he's been doing. So he's just following him while he's in the air and he gets oh, the, the charge frame. He just caught Zero jumping right into it. Brilliantly played by MK Leo and Sonic and he has a commanding 3-1 to one stock lead at this point. Zero trying to come back and take a game from MK Leo. If not, we're going to have a bracket reset and a quick one like that. Oh, oh. but she smash and it's now two stocks to one here Vicky. that follow-up into the up smash was just beautiful coming from zero and mk leo is not faltering notice how zero now has one stock he does have quite a hill to climb here yeah mk leo zero as we said mk leo can advance with a victory here and advance it to a bracket reset she trying to get that bear to connect no luck right there mk leo coming back down to the field block trying to punish right there but zero able to recover with she both fighters still staying in the middle of this map here fish i gotta say mk leo is doing such a great job getting out of these combos using the up b it's like really fast and gets you so far up there that zero can't really get anything started and then he just aerial drifts to like the center of the stage it's really great play for mk leo and he gets 
I almost get the upper. This guy's going. This guy's going nuts. Beautiful yeah. mix-up by MK Leo to keep zero at bay. 100 for zero. 92.5 for MK Leo. MK Leo with a two-to-one stock advantage, trying to get the KO at the top with the up air. No luck right there. The grab into the side throw from zero. MK Leo with that forward air. Now he has to edge guard. Zero getting back up on the stage. MK Leo trying to close this one out here, Vic. He's playing extremely. Patient right here, but unfortunately falls susceptible to Zero's up smash once again, Vish. Yeah, I mean, that, like we're talking about, if he does that aerial drift that many times, eventually Zero's gonna get a read on him. And he read that up smash, but gets the back air with the cutscene finish. Beautiful. We have a bracket reset. MK Leo taking two games from Zero in our grand final. So let's go ahead and reset this thing. And now it becomes a true best two out of three between both these very talented fighters. And what we saw there, Vicky, with Sonic was the ability to really dominate the aerial game. But as Vish pointed out, getting out of those combos that Zero was trying to throw at him. Yeah, using the spring as well as an option to just make sure he's not going to be falling uh, to Zero's combos. He kept his ground really well throughout the entire match and continuously racked up a lot of damage on Zero as Zero was trying to find his footing back to the stage. But uh, I will say that it felt like Zero was kind of adapting towards the end because he kind of understood, okay, he's going to try to get out of my combos as soon as he can with the up B. So as the set goes on, I'm wondering if Zero will punish those kind of uh, up Bs and then try to wait for the aerial drift a little bit harder even. So it's going to be interesting to see how this progresses. Well, let's get ready for our grand finals. It'll be best two out of three. We had the bracket reset. MK Leo taken on zero. Let's see the character selection. Oh, oh Sonic versus Mario. Take me back to all my arguments in the 1990s right here, Vicky. Oh my goodness, the ultimate battle and what a great fitting battle at that here within our final grand finals match. And here we are, Sonic versus Mario, ladies and gentlemen, with Super Smash Brothers Ultimate on the screen. Where are we leaving right now, Vish? This, this is crazy, man. You could not have picked these two more iconic characters for such, for such a finals. Um, it feels like Zero is, MK Leo is really uh, controlling the center well, and he goes back to center, and because he has such speed with Sonic, he can just dash all the way back and punish uh, Zero's movement. So he's already got a little bit of a lead. Side, side grab into the throw by Zero, able to clear space out of MK Leo. Zero trying to move around MK Leo with that speed, gets that dash attack to connect. Oh, but there's the air dodge we talked about, Vicky able to recover in time. Right. Yeah, and uh, unfortunately he had to resort to recovering uh, early there, and he got hit by forward smash, but he was still able to make it back onto the stage. Right, right. MK Leo with the 56 percent health advantage to zeros 114 early on both fighters at three stocks yeah it just really feels like this the uh, mkla is content with just kind of keeping center stage oh and a, a strong forward smash but not quite enough percent trying to use the flood to push him off not enough the drift but gets the up smash on recovery like that zero up smash from zero clears things out and you continue to look at the three to one three to two stock advantage for zero at this point MK Leo and Sonic trying to connect with that forward smash back air. No good right there. Sonic able to miss right there, but the punish and the throw by Zero here, Vicky. Yeah, and it's just as Vish said, Zero adapting to MK Leo and playing a lot more aggressively. Yeah, I also feel like Zero is actually staying really grounded as opposed to jumping because uh, MK Leo would just kind of get those punishes while Zero is in the air. And Zero's just like, you know, I'm gonna stay in the ground and get these nice little ground combos and rack up some percent going into the stock. The one, two, three jab on the edge guard, another down tilt to the edge guard, and Zero really doing a fine job staying grounded with Mario and getting those combos against MK Leo. He wasn't able to get in the last game here, Vic. Oh man, it really, it really feels like it's hard to edge guard Sonic just the way he uh, bounces like that and goes all the way below and then gets the up B. Mario can't really do much, just kind of waiting for uh, Sonic to get back. MK Leo with a nice little up throw there. Okay. Right there, Vish, Sonic doing a great job. MK Leo, it's now two stocks to two. If you're MK Leo, this is where you try to mount a comeback with the grab and the side throw by Zero. Oh, That's gonna clear space. MK Leo can't recover in time. And now Vicky Zero's looking at a two to one stock advantage over MK Leo. A uh, similar situation as to what happened to Zero, not happening to Leo, but as you can see right here, he's not letting it falter him as he continuously tries to find a way to get in on him. Yeah, I mean, just the grounded adaptation from Zero is so hard for Sonic to contend with. He tries to throw him up in the air and get some follow-ups that way, but it's just not really a Sonic strong suit it looks like in this matchup to be grounded in that manner.
Sonic with the grab and the side throw followed by oh. the fair was able to rack up some damage once again getting another throw into some combo and here comes the forward smash that connects right there both fighters getting back on stage MK Leo trying to mount a comeback down 2-1 in the stocks unable to connect with the aerial there able to connect on the ground but once again zero with the grab and the side throw Vicky it's actually quite interesting to see that zero is actually trying to go for the perfect shield this new mechanic now introduced within the new game where he lets go of shield at the perfect time to pair Sonic. Yeah, the timing is really tight though, so it's, it's it's very impressive that he's trying to go for it in this kind of juncture of the tournament. Oh, gets the pop-up, doesn't get the upper, they're back to neutral position. Zero with the two to one stock advantage, trying to get as much damage on MK Leo as he can while he still has that one stock lead. MK Leo trying to, of course, nullify that and trying to make it even ground. Oh, but the up smash from zero, not enough to clear things out. Still not enough here, Vicky. Yeah, getting the back hit of the up smash right there. Tries to go for the frontal hit instead, but unfortunately, since oh. it was so unsafe, MK Leo was able to shield grab him and send him out of there. Grab by Zero. MK Leo at 120. Both fighters at their final stock. Zero fresh as a daisy right now with only 0%. Oh, Zero able to connect with that fair. Beautifully done right there. MK Leo trying to avoid the combo on the edge. Rolling back right there. Gets a chance to punish with the back throw. Unable to do anything else right there, Fish. Oh, and he gets he gets a couple of great hits. Is he? Okay, great air dodge from Zero. He really needed that. It looked like he was in trouble with all those back airs that MK Leo was doing. Great. Nice little backer from, from Zero as well, but it is pretty difficult to edge guard Zero. Looks oh, oh my god! Oh, Reed! Oh, and go oh, oh, Reed oh, with the oh, up smash! Oh my god, Kachi is slipping. Rolling. Zero gets the up smash. He takes the first game of our grand finals. Don't forget, best two out of three. Zero needs one more game, and he will be our champion of the Super Smash Brothers Invitational 2018. Oh, and what we saw there, and it's a good point that you pointed out there, Vish, we saw Zero doing a better job of staying grounded. He really got punished and damaged quite a bit by those aerials in the previous matchup against Sonic. Wasn't the case this time. Yeah, I mean, just the, how much that uh, Sonic was getting while Mario was in the air, Zero kind of saw that and he was like, you know what, if I just stay grounded, I can still start up some of my initiations with my up tilt into my up airs and even some of my throws. But Sonic has a, a much harder time, it looked like, to get those kind of same initiations. But even then, it was still really close towards the end, just uh, almost with that, that edge guard from, from MK Leo with those couple backers. You talk about MK Leo and his ability to edge guard, but the air dodge by Zero was so critical. Mm -hmm. Vicky, tell us why. Uh, because at that moment, he recognized that MKLeo was going to try to go for something. So to avoid it, he had to maneuver himself around there. But because air dodge isn't the same way in this game, you don't want to be air dodging too much. Because if you air dodge from a high distance, there's so much lag. So you could possibly be ending your stock in an SD. Well, let's get set for our next game here. MK Leo versus Zero. If Zero can get the victory here, he will be our champion. Which characters will they choose? Well, let's go ahead and just rack it up again. Mario versus Sonic. Zero controlling Mario. MK Leo controlling Sonic. And you get a chance to take a look at the different mechanics of the stage now. Right. What are we going to expect to see here strategy-wise here, Vish? I mean, it's a longer stage, so controlling center and controlling that mid-platform is going to be better. Um, it, it feels like because there are platforms, he can uh, kind of get underneath Mario and get the initiations that Sonic is really looking for. So this could work out really well for him. We'll see how it goes. And Loser chooses the stage, so this was an interesting choice by MK Leo. You want to introduce some verticality to this level here, Vicky. Yeah, this is a stage that is no stranger to us, uh, town and city finally showing itself, and MKLeo with the grab, and here's the follows, but wow, Zero falling with an aerial into a grab. We see MK Leo getting back up on the ledge at this point, trying to do an edge guard punish. Oh, Zero able to take advantage oh. of that. Three straight connections on the juggle right there, followed by the up B, and he has a 70 to 92 advantage. Zero right now looking very strong. Once again, the forward smash isn't enough. No, MK Leo able to get back on the stage here, Fish. Yeah, I mean, and I think just because the, the stage, the bottom part of the stage is so long, Sonic can just kind of traverse that way quicker. And wow, what a great recovery option doing up air and then doing another up B into up air. That actually keeps the ledge so safe. I'd be scared to edge guard if I were zero going down there. MK Leo getting back on the stage, but staring at a 148% damage right now. Zero just at 88, and there comes the smash from zero, Vicky. And uh, there's a parry that you just saw right there. 
the perfect shield coming out of Zero, and you can recognize that Zero's always at an advantage whenever he keeps MK Leo guessing a where option he should do off the ledge. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, for sure, for sure. MK Leo at 19%, Zero at 120, three to two stock advantage for Zero. Here we go, MK Leo with the back throw. Is it going to be enough? No, Zero able to get oh. back on stage, but that spring oh, that's catches great. him in mid air, and how about that edge guard, Vish? That's really smart. We've seen him try to do that earlier, where the spring has a, a hitbox as it falls down there, and that one actually worked, worked out perfectly against Mario's style of recovery. I like it. MK Leo getting juggled a little bit in the air, but you see those platforms are now back. Zero trying to edge guard right there. MK Leo getting back on. MK Leo rolling out of the couple of aerials, thrown out by Zero, able to get the nice up smash. Zero yeah. coming down to earth right now at this point, and then here comes yet another combo here, Fish. Oh man, and again, just that up air off uh, from recovery just keeps him safe while he gets back on stage. It's actually a really great recovery option. Knocks him off, tries to read uh, Drift in, but Zero doesn't bite, actually aerial again instead, keeping himself safe. Oh! Grabbing the down throw earlier by MK Leo Zero trying to hold things down on the ground, avoiding matching MK Leo in the air. And Vicky, you seem that strategy is working pretty well for Zero here early on. Yes, yeah, since he was trying to catch Leo with the up smash, instead Leo caught him with his forward smash, showing him what the fist has to say. Don't let me catch you sleeping right there. MK Leo with a two to one stock lead, however, at 131% damage, trying to get as much as he can, playing with house money at this point, trying to force a game. Game three in our grand finals. Zero, meanwhile, has to eliminate two more stocks. Can MK Leo get back on? But Vicky, we see the recovery. And now it's one stock each. If Zero can get the KO here, he will be our champion, Fish. I really feel like as the set progresses, we're seeing these harder and harder reads with these huge smash attacks. I mean, they're not really crazy fast, so it must really have an understanding of who they're playing against and where exactly they're going to be during their um, trajectories. Really MK great. Leo with a couple of juggles right there. Zero on the side of the screen, getting a chance to recover here. Vicky, and you look at what's at stake with one stock left here for each fighter. Jordan, this is a perfect representation of momentum at its finest. MK Leo really showing that confidence as he continues to follow Zero up in the air and another grab. He is sent off the left side of the stage. Can he make it back safely, though? Yeah, and then... Uh, MK Leo just kind of keeping a little bit outside the range of any kind of hitboxes that Zero can do off the stage. And he gets the back air in the mid, at the middle of the stage. And this is going to game three, guys. Let's get some extra Super Smash Brothers Ultimate here. It is now 1-1. And we go to a winner-take-all decisive game three for what we saw there from MK Leo and Sonic. The addition of the platforms in that level really seemed to help with that vertical game because if you were Mario and, M and Zero and you tried to stay grounded, you still had a chance to get juggled in the air by MK Leo. Uh, as Vish pointed out, the platforms actually allowed MK Leo to take advantage of the platform pressure that he was applying to Zero. Um, although it seemed very close up until the very last stock, Leo was able to carry his momentum and take game two. Oh my god, I gotta give a shout out to both these competitors for giving us the most possible matches that we could have at this Invitational, going all the way down to the last game. I am so excited, man. Well, we've had an unbelievable crowd. Is everybody ready for Game 3 Grand Finals Super Smash Brothers Invitational 2018? It all comes down to this between MK Leo, can the youngster dethrone Zero, or will Zero look to repeat at yet another Invitational? It's Mario versus Sonic. Zero, the loser of the last game, choosing to go with the completely flat final destination here, Vish. Right, and it's exactly like we were talking about before. It just felt like his grounded game was really powered up with this kind of stage, and it, you just forced into the air a little bit more with that previous one. Makes sense to me in, this, in terms of a counterpick for Zero. Early going here. No major advantage for either fighter. Zero at 35, MK Leo at 26. Both fighters, it seems like Vicky, a little cautious and just making sure that they distance themselves from each other. Yeah, this is a uh, neutral as well. So you see uh, Leo is just trying to be a little bit more defensive, does not want to land the first hit as he recognizes that Zero is trying to go for the more aggressive approach here. Um, a lot of rolls coming from Leo, which we've established isn't the best idea, but you can tell he's feeling very confident in keeping those rolls going and keeping Zero up in the air.
You see the forward air from MK Leo going out. Both fighters still relatively the same health percentage. And you look at MK Leo, gotta try and put some pressure on Zero because you have to match that aggressiveness here, Fish. Yeah, and I, I like the I like the movements that they're doing. They're not uh, being too committal with any of their attacks. They're kind of dashing and then stopping their dash with their shield so they can immediately act out of it as best they can. They either get a shield grab or they can jump out and do an aerial. Oh, he goes all the way out there. I like the quick up B from MK Leo. It kind of avoids the back air that Zero was trying. It's Zero giving MK Leo a taste of his own medicine with some aerials leading to some juggle combos. And now it's 115 MK Leo, 78 Zero. Both fighters, three stocks as the winner will be your champion of the Super Smash Brothers Invitational 2018. Zero looking to recover. Oh, able to avoid the spring there, Vicky. Yeah, uh, good, good avoidance there coming from Zero, but he still finds himself off stage. Leo playing so much pressure for the spring and that tech fish. Oh my God, that tech was amazing. I mean, he's been seeing that the, the up is the up is spring is going to be coming out there, so he was definitely expecting it. He was just ready for it. And Zero to again off of the ledge. Zero is reading MK Leo with so many up smashes, gets the KO. He's up a little bit. Another grab into a side throw from Zero. He's up three stocks to two, trying to make the most that he can with this. You MK see that <clears> running throw. pushes shield. Clear Zero out of the arena at this point, trying to edge guard. Both fighters being very technical about what they're trying to do. Oh, another grab by MK Leo into the back throw here, Fish. Oh my god, yeah, and really, really cautious play, especially on the ledge. They're just like, what is he gonna do? Am I gonna get red again? I don't wanna get smashed one more time in this finals. Ooh, the oh. patience though displayed from Zero. He was trying to get the reap with a down smash. Notice he still has all three stocks. He is at 151 though, so Mkaleo is going to try to go for those backers a little bit more often or catch a jump with an up smash. Once again, another grab into a forward throw by MK Leo, but you see Zero able to rack up damage after damage on MK Leo with a 3 to 2 stock advantage. Zero still staying alive at 163. Both these fighters. It's been back and forth throughout this entire tournament, and beautiful aerial right there, Fish. Yeah, you can really feel like the pace of this last match is a bit slower and a little bit more methodical. They're kind of just waiting and trying to punish, trying to see where the air, air dodges come out, seeing where the recoveries are come out. Like there, Zero got a great backer on the right side of the stage there. Just trying to control center is working out so well for the... Oh my god! Oh, Sonic smash. tried to do the down, down air, air, but the up smash by Mario trumps that. And now it's 175 to 19, it. but Zero with the 3 to 1 stock lead here, Vicky. Yeah, Zero with the up smash uncontested, but MK Leo with the back air finally taking Zero's yeah. first stop. That was so smart from Zero because that's one of the few options uh, Sonic has on coming down like that. And you hadn't you th used it thus far, but that was just the hardest, coldest three I've seen. Zero is just one KO away from becoming your champion. MK Leo staring a two to one deficit in the face. Side throw by Zero. MK Leo trying to recover. Zero missing with a couple of those aerials right there. Both fighters. Couple of glancing blows. MK Leo gets back on the stage, able to punish with the smash, Vicky. Yeah, which punch is gonna hit first as MK Leo now tosses zero off stage. Although he does have 91% on his last stock, he's gonna probably want to play a little bit more safely. Yeah, he, he really needs to just with the percent that he has. He's gotta really make every single recovery count. He's gotta get back to center as best he can. This is not a great position. It's not worked out really well for MK Leo while he's getting off the ledge. Hmm. Zero's read him many, many times. Oh my goodness. Keep an eye out for that up smash from Zero. Sonic and MK Leo at 121. Zero can smell a championship. Just has to connect with one more critical hit here. Trying to block, gets the forward air. Is it enough? No. MK Leo getting back on the stage. Zero trying to close this thing out. Side throw against MK Leo. Still not enough. Oh, here it is. Over. And that is it. And your champion, oh! Zero, able to get the victory over MK Leo. Your champion of the Super Smash Brothers Invitational 2018. How does he keep doing it, man? How does he win every invitation? How does he <laughs> get back all the way to finals, bringing out the scarf, bringing out the Mario? This guy cannot be stopped. He is just so good. And it, it took the third game of the grand finals, Vicky, and you look at how well masked both these players are, how well respected they are in the community, and it's certainly a treat for everybody that got a chance to watch that. Yeah, it, it was fantastic. I mean, seeing Zero with another streak here with the Super Smash <laughs> Brothers Invitational. I want to know who's been giving Zero these notes because what a fantastic showcase, Vish. Oh, my God. It's been
Is Smash Brothers in this guy's blood? How is he so good at it? I mean, he's just born to play. This guy is a contender. I really love the adaptation throughout the set from both of these competitors. They really showed us what high level potentially could look like in this game. And it was a really great showing, honestly. I enjoyed it quite a bit. Like you said, a tremendous showing of skill that we saw from both Zero and MK Leo and all of our fighters. But now let's get set for our award ceremony. And for that, let's bring him out again, the creator of the Super Smash Brothers series. Put your hands together for Mr. Sakurai. <laughs> and what a treat for everybody here at the Velasco Theater. It is different from the... We have medals for both of our finalists here. And let's begin Smash for Wii U, but... with our second place finisher, MK Leo. <laughs> As the crowd you got to understand that, like, he's actually been retired. The love from this community for the creator. So he's not nearly go a, as good at that game as he right was here. before. We have a of for our participants here. Let's begin with our yeah, he's still won. Please give a big Against round of applause arguably for the best player in, the, the, in Smash Wii U. Right now, Leo is and we had to get to pretty the much like the best game player. Of our grand finals, but we have a champion. Give it up. For zero! It Not does seem does like it's different medal, to me. But we also have a There's enough differences that it does seem like it's different so let's to go me. ahead and bring that out. Our Super oh. Smash Brothers Invitational 2018 Championship Trophy presented by Mr. Sakurai himself to our champion, Zero! Oh. That is a beautiful trophy. Oh my gosh. Gorgeous. Just a wonderful I mean, display. You, now let's hand it over to Mr. Sakurai for maybe, a few words. Maybe, like, from our perspective, it might not uh, seem that different, but zero, from their perspective, it's probably way different. Zero, you are really good. Please come in. Let's ask the players uh, who participated to come out on stage. I mean, they got to practice it a little bit. That's Zero's thing, is he picks stuff up so fast. That's the reason why he took off and started winning all those tournaments early on, is because he picks up whatever he starts playing really fast. <laughs> so, did you enjoy the show? And I don't know if you remember, but this game is not yet done. Okay. And honestly, I was really scared that, oh my god, there's going to be a bug, it's going to freeze up. I was really scared. And speaking of which, I did find already two or three bugs while watching this tournament. Oh, snap. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Sack, did you see that? Zero already knows what it is. I'll be sure to fix it in the production version. Zero already knows what the bug is. <laughs> Ban as a bug. <laughs> but I was really impressed at how well you guys played despite this being a game in development. This guy's still making games. And this still making game, Smash uh, games. I never, never would have guessed that he would still be making being, Smash uh, games during at this point in my life. And as you learn the new rule sets for this game, it's crazy. I think uh, the, what you can do with this game will change as well. Like, it's, it's kind of crazy this guy is still making Smash Brothers games. So with that said, I need to go back home to Japan and get working. So I'm going to take a midnight flight tonight and uh, start work tomorrow morning. Woo! Guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And with that said, I hope you're all looking forward to the release of this game. Thank you very much. It's okay. I'm fine. There not being anything else.
let's give it up one more how could time I not how could Zach I not be happy with, that took place in the with Super today Smash Brothers like, Invitational literally 2018. my favorite my my the character Eight I wanted the, the most got put in the game countries. We came down to an unbelievable grand finals. The atmosphere here at the Belasco Theater was absolutely electric. And that concludes a wonderful well, doubleheader day. I of think Nintendo that you, this, is how, this is how I would you look saw at the it. the Splatoon 2 World Championship. The GG Boys probably of Japan becoming victorious in that. Will be more people watching a, a overall a Nintendo to Direct than will be watashing the love from the right community now. behind these games, and of course our super and Smash Bros. Invitational to actually get more people 2018. MK Leo and Zero it, and would it might make more sense. You might have the all the people who are interested already interested in Smash Bros. watching this, but as well as a to see you'll all have a bunch more people probably watching. And just once again, a wonderful Aiden atmosphere is here later on. at the Belasco Theater in Los no, Angeles. No, I know. It's all, it's all the people who are already going to buy the game that are watching. Let's hear it for Vicky Kitty and so. Vish. Then of course, Plus, I mean, there's, there's, there's a chance two, two, that maybe course, they don't have for all the, hard the stuff ready the to show another character possible. yet. That's, Make that's sure you very... continue to tune into Nintendo Treehouse We have to think about this for a second. For more great Nintendo content. In the context of how many freaking characters are in the game. The week. Pug, Pug, so let's let's count. How many characters did they add from the last game? From the last game to this game, how many more characters is that? Let's think about it for a second. Think about it. It's a lot. It's already a lot. Now nah, it seemed like there were multiple moves changed on a lot of characters. Well, every game, every Smash Brothers game is built on the the last game. They always carry over stuff. They carry over as much as they can. That's how every new Smash Brothers game is. I think it's probably it it's good for us to be happy that literally that they that they even brought over all the characters from the last game I think is a big deal. The fact that they brought back characters who were complete gone completely for multiple games is an, is also a big deal. So if you if, let's say if you think of it from if you think of it from multiple perspectives here. Technically, we got three characters that are completely new, have never been in a game before. So three. One one of those being comparable to, like, on the hype level of a third-party character. My guess is they're saving reveals uh, for each Nintendo Direct all the way up till December. And then in December, we will get the final character reveals that are in the main game so i think i think that's probably their plan they probably want to use them to advertise games and stuff so that's what i'm that's what i'm assuming is happening here I think that, uh, I, th I mean, I think it worked for him last time, because if you think, um, here, here's the other thing, if the game was coming out in September, then I think I would agree with you, I think this is probably, like, your, one of your last chances to, to really show it off, but it coming out in December, they have a long time to show stuff. I would expect a character like in literally every direct that we get so i guess it's kind of cool in that right that we're still gonna kind of get a little bit of what we got last time where hey there's a nintendo direct even if they're not talking about something you're interested in you probably should watch because they're maybe gonna so 
from a marketing perspective, it might also work because like you, you can get people to watch Nintendo Directs that they might not watch usually. So I don't know, just some some ideas. And I think that's it for today. Actually, I don't think they have anything else today. So I'm gonna go get to work. Um, if you guys, if any of you guys are watching live, or not live, but uh, you're watching this on YouTube, um, what did you guys think of the Invitational? What did you guys think of just the whole all of Nintendo's E3 on the first day for them so far? We do. We should have two more days. Um, I don't know. I I just feel like. You know, maybe there wasn't, like, a big third-party reveal, but, like, there's still all the third-party characters from the last game are there, and Snake's back, and everybody's back, and Ridley is in the freaking game, like, I had pretty much come to the conclusion that it was something that was never gonna happen, so... It's, it's so weird now that it has, like, I... It's, I feel like I'm, like, dreaming or something. Um, but uh, feel free to let me know in the comments how you felt uh, about it. And uh, uh, I'll uh, talk to you guys later. Bye.